Welcome back, everybody, to the ATLC Gamer 2. We're joined by a special guest in uh, Sebastian Force and Force. What's up? <laughs> Nothing much. I'm a bit tired, but, you know, happy and eager to cast, I guess. I guess. I guess. <laughs> I guess. Right, well, <laughs> that's my line, right? Mm. Yeah. How are we supposed to feel when you say that? Mm. Uh, I'm, okay, I'm also happy and eager to cast, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, definitely, at least in the picture that I posted, uh, definitely showed that as well. Mm -hmm. Forsen will be joining us for our first match here, Cloud9 versus Viatown. Now, Forsen is not competing here, but uh, he's doing the next best thing, which is casting. This is the mm -hmm. next step. Um, in the inevitable road to retirement. Yeah. So, um, you know, how, how was ATLC for you in general? Did you enjoy playing the league even though you guys didn't get to the playoffs? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we tripped on the finish line basically. So it, it, was, a, it was a good experience. Um, different format. Pretty fun, actually. You did uh, manage to knock out Arkhan, though. We did, and that was the goal. That was the goal of the whole okay. yeah. invite. Like, okay, we're going to knock out Arkhan. Yeah, we, yeah, for sure. Uh, um, <laughs> how was it like the dynamic of force and boys a lot of people pegged you and value town as two of the people they would love to see go through and then uh, value town did end up and you guys fell just a little bit short um mm -hmm. but the experience building the team with like chalk and oskaka mm -hmm. was that a lot of fun for you too uh yeah yeah definitely i mean uh, those were two i mean i'm not both of them for like forever like uh, chalk is since fight night and oskaka even before that so uh, I had no problems playing with those two. We, I think we had pretty good synergy, even though I don't actually practice as much as I should off stream. Uh, but they knew that going into this the format that I'm probably not like the best teammate to have. Uh, but, <laughs> okay. You know, I still yeah. gave him the chance to play in the tournament, so that was that was pretty good. All right. Uh, well, it looks like we have uh, the water, so Force is ready to cast. We have our first match, yeah, yeah. Trump versus Ekai. We can actually take a look uh, fully oh, at the lineups. I, I, I took a look at the lineups, actually. <clears throat> One thing that was pretty interesting is uh, both these teams, they're, of course, the winners of yesterday, but they have exactly the same classes. Yeah, uh, they they actually even said that they had the same decks um, across. Like, for they? example, the Warlocks, they're both the same. No, the, the Paladins are different. Oh, you're Striper right. Striper is running one is mid -range. A control yeah. mid range and one is secret, right? Yeah, Trump's a yeah, secret. You're right, you're right, you're right. But I remember Trump was talking to Strife Code directly and saying, like, wow, we have like even the same deck. So yeah. the lineup there, they felt very similar in terms of their preparation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not sure who is favored based off that mid range paladin versus the uh, secrets paladin, but I, I, I like to see how their strategies unfold based off similar lineups. Yeah, it should be pretty interesting. Uh, now, Valley Town was the other kind of makeshift team. At the start of the Archon Team League, I was I was thinking that some of the uh, already existing teams would have like that teamwork, that team synergy already built in. Do you think that was maybe like a speed bump for you guys, or you think maybe for Valley Town? Yeah, I mean it's it's not for Valley Town that much. I think Trump uh, actually tries pretty hard uh, when when he's not streaming. He's actually mm -hmm. talking to his teammates about decks, and he has his statistics. You know. All this. We saw uh, the notebook. Yeah, exactly. Like he has a lot of statistics, oh. and he tries really hard. So it's not the same thing. I'm more like if, whenever I don't stream, I refuse to play Hearthstone. You know. Okay. <laughs> but we see a really great start here from uh, Trump. Uh, yeah, that is that is pretty good. But the owl um, kind yeah. of stops the aggression a little bit. It's just um, I think Hunter has a really good matchup against uh, against Warlock if you have the unleashes and the explosives. Definitely. I don't know if Ecop is running explosives. I think he's actually running freeze yesterday. I think he's running face hunter with freeze it's, traps. It's, yeah, it's the classic hybrid hunter where you okay. have two freezing traps. You have uh, leper gnomes. Uh, I don't know if you curve out to high mains. I don't think he has high main. I think he curves out to shredders and arcing golems. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just because you're hybrid doesn't mean you have to hit the high main. It's just yeah. the idea that you have defensive options in case you want to play a little bit more control mm -hmm. against aggro. All right, well, Ecop is okay with taking some damage here, I guess. Yeah, um, like, he really, like, the Owl would be a pretty good play here, you know. You, you'd be able to trade with the Flame Imp. Uh, but at the same time, you want to keep that for Void Colors and Eggs uh, taunted up. Mm -hmm. So, just doing this trade here, taking a bit more damage. It was not even that good after an owl, too. It's like a 2 1 that gets challenged by mm -hmm. the Void Call or Void Walker, excuse me. Yeah, <clears> not <throat> attacking into the, the Void Caller or Void Walker is uh, pretty good here. It saves him one health, and he needs to trade for sure. Otherwise, yeah. there would be like uh, doggies. Uh, you really, have uses, I mean, yeah. you really need a min max like that life differential mm -hmm. in, this, in this matchup because if, if you have a considerable. Uh, life lead, you're just that player that goes face every single time. Yeah, for sure, for sure. That's not Trump. What? That. <laughs> <Wait, laughs> I'm confused. Yeah. Uh, did you say it's not true? 
it's not, not Trump. Trump. Oh, it's not Trump. <laughs> Oh. The, the Wait, what? <laughs> oh, it's rigged. Oh, that looks more, that looks more like Trump. <laughs> what happened? Archon is playing in the finals. <laughs> oh yeah, let's <laughs> Ah, a little flub there. I guess we just uh, accidentally <clears> sent <throat> the wrong signal. Trump is absolutely there. And now there's two Trumps. Oh yeah, that's right. Man, that sh- that shirt has seen a lot of play recently. Wait, as the same shirt as yesterday? Uh oh. Mm. Well, actually, the Cloud9 guys are also still wearing Cloud9 shirts, too. I imagine that Trump has a closet full of Trump W shirts. I don't know about that, but I actually do think the Cloud9 guys do have some of the wardrobe. How many Trump W shirts do you have, for us? Uh About zero. About zero. Roughly. So you round down. Uh, or up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Silence on that to prevent knife juggler uh, value. Shenanigans. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Ecop has just uh, been a bit behind on the board uh, mm-hmm. so far, yeah. and that's kind of bad because with this deck, you really need to get that damage at the start of the game. Yeah. So uh, he's looking to fifty. Oh my god! That's so good. But he can still hit the egg now twice. You know, twenty-five percent chance to kill the egg here, and no. he misses. So that's good. Wow. Really good. To the face. Excellent. Perfect aim. Wow, yeah. well, that's, uh, that's a really good response. That's a really good pick up there. Two. Two for sure. Nice. Uh, How yeah. do you know? Oh, because once uh, once you see the RNG go against you, it's just a running trend throughout the whole it game. Snowballs. It snowballs. Oh, it, it's yeah. the RNG snowball. Gotcha. It's like hidden blizzard mechanics, actually. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's right. So this is looking uh, fairly good for uh, Echo right now. Um, having that quick shot and only another card in his hand. Uh, he will be able to cycle that. Yeah. Well, now he's just getting that damage. So this is exactly yeah. where we need these things to be. Like just pluck away at the face, get him down to like a fifteener, and then uh, the warlock at that stage has to trade in every mm-hmm. single minion. Uh, I wonder if Argus. I mean, Argus is a fairly weak play here. Uh, he could have tapped for a power whelming, I guess, uh, but that's like kind of far fetched, maybe. Mm-hmm. But he needed something there because just an Argus doesn't really do anything. I mean, it puts a little power on board, and it might be another uh, target to buff with his second defender. If you keep in mind here, I believe Ecop only has freeze traps, so I think you can actually unleash, trade the Mad Scientist into the two four, mm-hmm. and the um, and the one one, and then do double doggy kill command face to yeah. uh, be able to quick shot next turn. Because when your opponent's at twenty, there's no way kill command is not hitting face from this yeah, stage yeah, in the game. It is. Yeah, so. this is where the hunter leverages <clears throat> its damage against the warlock's hero power, and it just feels like really bad if you ever are in a position to tap. I, either he kill commands the four four here, or he hero powers. <clears throat> I don't think that um, he will let. Uh, I don't think he will kill command face here. I don't think so. Why not? Uh, if if he only has freeze traps, which yeah. so far he's only had, I think that is the play. I mean, you want to maximize your damage, that's why you hear power uh, every time before you uh, kill command. But uh, I, okay. I don't see him losing this uh, either way, actually. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, he's so far ahead right now, and this is the problem. Like, if you don't have a really great start, if you don't get that 4 implosion or 3 implosion, mm-hmm. at least uh, you can have a hard time in this matchup. Well, we ha- uh, Trump did have the, the better start, it's just that uh, Ecop's uh, juggler was... Uh... Mm. Was very Ooh, sharp. Very good, yeah. 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 Uh, can that can the defender bouncing back help him at all though? Because um, I mean, defender of Argus is one of the ways you can mm-hmm. win, and he does have cards yeah. like Malganas. He's he's gonna go ahead and no, he's gonna go face here actually. I mean, there's no he knows that uh, there is only uh, Malganas that can prevent lead, and then he's, that's like two turns from now. So yeah, he's not gonna have time to. Well, the best thing he could draw is uh, probably an implosion. He might even need to tap for it. Yeah, he needs a tap. He knows that's a freezing trap, and he knows he's dead next turn if he just plays a sea giant or something. So he needs to go for a um, implosion. Yeah, he's dead on board if he just plays sea. Yeah, and then you can top deck a void caller and power realm it Ooh. and get the mm-hmm. on So that's, that's like, but yeah, that's that's not gonna cut it. Yeah. No. So he just get some information. Knows that it's the uh, freezing trap. But yeah. that's going to wrap up the game very quick, but this is kind of what you expect to do. Um, even if you get the early game board against Hunter, they're so good at commandingly taking it back and leveraging damage against your hero power. Yeah. Uh, knife Juggler. Pretty good card sometimes. Yeah. One thing we didn't talk about, too, is that this was Ecop versus Trump. Um, 
Uh, a matchup that uh, classic I know, rivalry. It's, it's a classic rivalry dating mm-hmm. back from uh, the early fight night days where mm-hmm. he come, yeah. you know, called out Trump a lot. But I think uh, they're on very friendly terms. In fact, I see them playing games with each other all the time. Ecop's like cheering Trump on. So I feel like uh, even though some people might be like, wait, Ecop versus Trump, isn't that like a really big deal? I think they're actually like on pretty good friend friendly terms now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There used to be a lot more like actual hate between the uh, yeah, pickup yeah. at least than Trump. But... I mean, I think it's just because Trump's also like stepped it up a lot in terms of his play. He's actually he has in the, in the last few months. Yeah. He's, uh, I mean, he's really proven to be one of the best players in the yeah. game. Part part of the beef was that you know Ecop felt like uh, Trump got a lot of undeserved attention based mm-hmm. off like you know people's per- perception of his skill versus his actual skill. But I think Trump's actually stepped up a lot to that yeah. point. So I think Ecop's even starting to respect that. And that shows growth for ECOP. Can you imagine yeah. that? Yeah. Things really Whoa. Awesome. Things you never never thought yeah. you'd see. Yeah. Anyway, um, so we saw the classes there for a brief moment again. Yeah. It, I believe I believe we were right. I think uh, the only difference in the decks is uh, the difference in Paladin. Mm-hmm. So uh, really it'll have to do with uh, the the rules of the tournament, really. Uh, who's going to be favored here? If, uh, if Cloud9 can get like one point on each member, can not, not have to get two cornered into a bench... Just that kind of stuff, I think, is really going to be the, the dictating factor here. As as most players, we can expect to play quite well, even though yesterday was maybe an adventurous night for most people. <laughs> At least uh, for the fellow on our right. Do you think that there, there's like a lot of skill involved in the fact that the classes are similar, so you can kind of understand which team has a better approach? Or do you feel like it's more of like 50-50 because they have the same thing, they might be evenly matched, it's really hard to say. Yeah, it's mostly going to be like um, the matchups, like who gets the better matchup. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's mostly about that when it comes to this kind of tournament because everyone is almost playing the similar classes. Like sometimes the, one class might differ, at most two. Like, uh, But usually people knows what's best and that brings that every time. So it's going to all depend on the, the mind games. I know that some teams like to roll a dice to decide uh, their class. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm not going to say any specific teams because, yeah. But uh, the deciding factor is basically what matchups you get. So right. they're going to have to either the mind game or get really lucky with the dice. What kind of strategy did you guys have behind that? I mean, it doesn't matter anymore, we, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we used... Uh, a bit of both actually like when we got tilted we just rolled the dice uh, okay. <laughs> and, and uh, before that we just like try to outpick them you know try to mind game them like how frequently does it work and how frequently does it backfire like 50-50? Uh, some teams are actually surprisingly uh traditional in that sense that they do the same thing every week like, right yeah so it's kind of easy to read but some teams just roll the dice and like nihil them and like yeah some other teams so it's hard to to make that read then mm-hmm. Oh, it's Battle of the Druids. I believe um, I believe there were a few slight differences. I, yeah, I remember... Shifegro is running much more aggressive Druids. Right. But also, Dog, mm. I, I remember him having like something a bit weird about his deck. I think he had Ancient of Wars, didn't he? He was like slower. Mm, perhaps. Who was the one that uh, had the charging... Uh, uh, Strifegro. Strifegro was oh, playing like oh, Nimsh's yeah. um, buff Druid. Oh, okay, okay. Tice, uh, Tice had the Ancient of Wars. I don't remember oh, if Dog right, had right, them. Right, right. Well, perhaps. We will see. Dog had the weird one. Mm. I think it was just weird how he just had bad hands. Maybe that yeah. was it. Yeah. That's not that weird, actually. We drew it. Yeah. But it is, it is weird mean, for it to happen like four times in a row. He had like wild growth into two swipes of Savage or a force of nature. Right. Like, mm-hmm. Oh, that's what it was. He has a lot of tech choices. He has like Harrison Jones. He has uh, another tech choice, I remember. Well... I don't remember Savage combatant. the other tech choices. I know he has a BGH in there. I think we talked about yes. the value of having a BGH nowadays. Yeah. I think I think it's actually a tech choice these days because Doctor Room is really not that frequent. Yeah, but Mysterious Challenger is still like such a problem. Mm. Yeah, Mysterious order. Challenger it would always become a 7-7 seven, seven if you leave it. And then you can BGH it the next turn. But you will still take that 7 damage. Uh, so yeah, it's not I, the same thing. But... I think the optimistic situation is you run into Get Down and Hope Avenge lands on it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is also... All right, the Fiola Lightbane. And that was the interesting thing too, because we thought, what was the Divine Shield? What do much better than the the Dark Bane? What exactly does he have to, um, to trigger it? Tar- yeah, we haven't seen this. You can card wrath yet. it. Yeah, and then it loses Divine Shield immediately. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can also Living Roots it, 
and it also loses divine so <laughs> so what exactly yeah. Yeah, we're not sure okay. about that card but the other Sorry. one does work like I'm... if you're if you're three off lethal you can wrath the other one to be yes. yeah, yes. yeah that, yes. that makes sense um, but, uh... on, on a serious note i think there's mark of the wild in here oh uh, yeah, yeah it should be we, we've just literally not seen a single card that actually right. targets and buffs <laughs> a minion yet. Right, okay. right now it's just a spider tank essentially hmm well, Which is, it's, it's, it's possibly worse, you know. I talk, talked about it yesterday. Because if, you, if you're running worse. Spider Tank, then your opponent can play Spell Slinger, you get an unstable portal, and like a Goblin Blast Mage. And then yeah. suddenly you're really sad that you don't have Spider Tank. You're right. But then what if they give you Spell Slinger, and then you get a buff spell like Mark of Nature or something? Um, Dark Whispers. Okay. okay, that's true. Demon but also, views. also, oh, um, also the, the Aegis is uh, vulnerable to Rend Black Hand. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Red <laughs> black and can target it because it is a legendary minion. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's gonna set up for a savage shore here, turn three. Um, this is super awkward for dog not having anything to do in turn two. Oh no, I'm sure he's used to this. Yeah, I haven't no, seen I, yesterday's, yeah, games. yesterday's games. He had this is exactly the way every dog druid game goes. Meanwhile, yeah, like, Crow. Oh I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. To be fair, Strife Crow's deck is built so that way it always has early game plays. It's very rare. I think it tops out. At Ancient of Lore, Doctor Boom, and it might some some of the like renditions of these decks don't even have Boom and Ancient of Lore because of how aggressive it is. Yeah. I think Striker realized just how terrible Dog's play was, so he might even innervate the uh, Druid the Saber for more damage. Yeah, but then it would have done that last turn. I feel like uh, for more damage. Yeah. Okay. But this is uh, this is awkward. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Now now he instead wants to go. Yeah, that's, not, that's a not that good of a draw actually because yeah. you don't have anything you want to play. But if you pick up a Doctor Boom or something, Ancient of Lore next turn, it will be. Mm. Are you af you're really afraid of swipe, right? So right. You yeah, wanna, you are. You are. You don't want to sure. play. You'd never roots. charge it here. No. Yeah. Living Roots is scary to you though, but you guess you don't lose everything if he swipes. Yeah. Come on, Striker, ping it for two. I think. Ping it for two. I think he's gonna keep it. I don't think <laughs> he would the divine play. Shield. If he were to have a, like a savage sword in his hand, maybe he would opt to play it, like because he could actually kill him next turn. Uh, but it doesn't have a savage sword, so he's not gonna play the living roots or anything. Mm -hmm. It's not worth the risk of getting right. swiped. All right. Well, now uh, you have a few options. You can actually play cards. Um, yeah. Shredder seems to be the better one. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't mind the Savage Combatant either. Just being one out of range is pretty nice. Yeah, as well. the problem is that you can actually just kill it off then with your hero power and the Panther. Oh. Uh, yeah, that, that might be what's going to happen anyway, right? Yeah, if he's lucky uh, and gets a 1 HP minion from his Shredder. Ooh, do you think that he can get away with playing Living Roots now because he can play Lothar? So he can just Lothar oh, yeah, yeah. Living Roots. Uh, most suddenly, most suddenly. Yeah. Um, because swipe costs too much now, so he should hypothetically be able to get away with this. Yeah, yeah. all face. He's gonna put another sixteen. Uh, he might even consider. No, he needs to innovate for the force of nature next time. And we're in a hurry Ooh, to get to that finals. Today. Yeah, yeah. Shrekker wants to go to the pool, read his book. <laughs> no, oh. direwolf alpha. Yeah. So uh, that's game, right? Yeah, that's game. Eight. Sixteen damage Ten. exactly. Oh my yep. goodness! You're right. <laughs> oh my god. There you go. That's even more damage. <laughs> yeah, off the, off the top. Just, just the tilt draw. That's a that's a bad start for Value Town. Oh jeez. Yeah. I mean, this is what happened yesterday too. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think like how valuable is it that the Druid slipped through, and because Druid is a deck that can be targeted, um, mm -hmm. but I don't think like they're bringing like any mage or something. So it's like it, it is, seems the like Druid, Druid has, seems to have just fair matchups all around. Pretty okay matchups. Yeah, nothing mm -hmm. nothing too punishing. Uh, except if you're playing Dog's Druid, in which case you get punished every single game. Yeah, it's, it's a zero versus two there, in, in that game at least. Well, uh, it looks like Cloud9's in pretty good spirits. Yeah? Uh, I think so. It's hard, hard to tell. Right now, yeah. Even the cameraman had a lot to drink last night as well. <laughs> All right, well, Calento, uh, Calento yesterday was the one who got Cloud9 really rolling. He was the one winning two games really quickly, and mm -hmm. they just mix it up by just sending it out. I do know that uh, Cloud9 is also much more on that, like, random roll train where they're just like, ah, you know, we'll right. play what we feel is pretty good right now. And, like, at this stage when they're up 2-0, I know specifically they're always just like, we'll just pick whatever we feel like is good. So they, they might go right. the one-win the one route that you're doing to check off, so that way, like, 
Kalemto has a win, Ikop has a win, Trifka has a win, so that way benching is less punishing if it ever gets to this. I just I just feel that that position makes it so your opponents can't play and they can't mind game as you basically. Like yeah. if you have three guys with one deck left, you know, you can't really punish that. So um I think I think here they might as well just send out Kalento because if he wins, they'll be fine. But if they send out like Strife Crow and then Kalento loses too, mm -hmm. uh, then, you know, Ecop gets like really screwed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there's, it's still so early that it doesn't really matter what you play that I think you really should just play one of Kalento's decks. And they are pretty polarizing. Like yeah, uh, you have Patron Warrior, which, which does well against like half the decks. And you have yeah. Dragon Priest, which does well against the other half of the decks. Yeah, it doesn't really matter for them. Uh... You have to take in consideration what your weakest deck is as well right now, and I, I, it should be the the paladin, uh, mid range paladin. Really? Uh, yeah. If I had to choose between all the remaining ones, what do you think don't you think the zoo? zoo deck is maybe a bit more inconsistent than the mid range? Uh, the zoo, the zoo is actually pretty good against patron druid. Uh, not that good against priest anymore because of the dragon buffs and. But it's it's like I think it has better matchup overall. Uh, the paladin just. If it was a secret paladin, then uh, I would probably say that the Sioux was weaker, but uh, I don't know about the mid-range paladin. Well, Strefkar's paladin has a lot, it has like all the board clear mechanics. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so in my book, that means if he draws reasonably well, there's no way he'll lose to Priest. Yeah. Oh, actually, Priest is uh, pretty good against mid-range paladin. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't run Cabal anymore? Uh, or, or does he run Cabal, Kibler? Kalento um, uh, runs Cabal. Kalento has okay. the Kibler. I don't know. Okay, because if you run Cabal, it's a, it's a better matchup for Priest, uh, mm -hmm. for sure. But um, I think it's a fairly... Like, it used to be way Priest-favored uh, back in the day. Uh, but now it's, like, pretty close, I think. But uh, we'll see. I haven't seen that matchup too much. Yeah, it just feels like... Secret yeah, the, the, the problem with the, the Priest decks uh, and the Paladin decks is that it just has no finisher. Mm -hmm. But uh, the Paladin has uh, significantly more efficient board clears. So if you if you have two decks with no finishers, just the one that gets more value out of its clears should win in my book. But yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe Priest has a better chance than I think. So we're actually going to see priest. priest versus Hunter. I was, I was expecting the, the Patron here. but I think this is actually a pretty bad matchup for Kibler. Kibler is playing uh, like a mid-range Hunter, but Kalento is playing uh, Dragon Priest with Cabals. Yeah, and that, that, that can get pretty messy. Yeah, and if he curves out really well with early game dragons and things that benefit off dragons, sometimes Hunter can't really do much because yeah. like their their freezing traps won't have any effects. Like, oh, I bounced Twilight well back in my hand. Oh, I can use Blackwing Corruptor now. It's like that kind of stuff. <laughs> playing uh, playing a uh, priest, you really want to go second uh, in this matchup because not only do you get like another card to Mulligan, you get another card in your hand in total as well because you want that dragon synergy mm -hmm. suit. The dragon cards Oh my god! And it, it does go second. And he needs a dragon right now, really yeah. badly. I would I would probably Mulligan um, like. Uh, but one Vermerist, uh, only keep one Vermerist probably here. You think so? Yeah, because you really want that dragon buff synergy mm -hmm. for the taunt. And the two damage. The two damage is a breaking point here. Uh, Mad Scientist, two health, uh, hit Creeper. I think the Shrinkmeister is health. worth keeping though. Because uh, you're probably going to get that presence on the board with the first Vermerist. Yeah, but what happens if, if you don't pick up a dragon? That's the problem here. Mm -hmm. So that's why you want to... Like, if you had a dragon, then you could probably keep the Shrinkmeister. But without the dragon, you kind of need to mulligan everything. I think he's going to keep one. one Shrinkmeister and one Wormers agent. I think he'll only keep one Wormers. All right, let's see who's right. Yeah. I like the. Uh, thinking uh, this your bet. I like the Shrinkmeister Wormers because sometimes you get in the situation where if you have the Wormers, you get oh, dragons. Oh, Crip wins. Let's keep it, but but like... you get punished for it. <laughs> yeah, no dragon. Uh -oh. This is bad. Oh, he got off the top. Yeah, he can get off the top. For off sure. the top. No. no. Correct. One of the tech choices there. I think um, you can still go for that Shrink Meister. It still has board presence. You can still put Power Word Shield, so it does have some pretty decent stats. You can put yeah. in double Power Word Shield, I'm and so it can't die though. for like three turns. Why did he mulligan away the Mad Scientist? That's like really weird, in my opinion. Kibler did? No, uh, Colanto. No, oh, no, mass. Kibler. Yeah. Kibler, yeah, Kibler. Wow, this creature is going to grow really fast. Yeah. Ooh, that's actually that, that shrink meister has been juicing. Wouldn't you guys have played the Norshay yeah, there? Not shrinking at all. No, Norshay instead of the second power chill. I yes. guess he doesn't want it to get chopped out by equal horn bow then and uh, lose it immediately. He, like yeah. you can use it retroactively on turn three by like healing post damage as opposed to like. You can still uh, kill it off if you had a eagle horn bow now. That's um, true. 
So it's a weird. He's denying. I think uh, he denied the kill command. Kill command, yeah. Yeah. This is a, a nice little thing. Snake trap just to force Kalenta to hesitate, see what he can evaluate off that trap. Yeah, Kalenta's probably just going to North Shire. Yeah, still no dragon here, uh, which is a problem. He's not going to get taunt, so he's going to have to play the North double North Shire here. Uh, does he know exactly what traps um, Kibler is running? I think we saw Snake yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, did stay. we see a freezing trap? I think we did as well. Okay, right. So then he uh, then he can't know for sure. So he's you think, you think double north shire is the way here? Double north shire and passing, I think, is the way. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to get the activation of the exactly. Trap. You don't want to gamble on uh, it being um, snake or freezing right now. You don't have to. So you can just chillax here. North shire. And oh, there's a bow. That's pretty good. Yeah, but he can't uh, deal with both of them. Uh, well, let's see. No, no. Doug is his three damage, bow is three mm -hmm. damage. You just want a bow here. Yeah. And it's unfortunate, too, that uh, there's no Houndmaster value at all. Um, it's just pretty much going to be waiting until we can get another beast out. Yeah, but he actually might proc the snake trap because he thinks it's racing it, right? Oh, mm -hmm. you're, right. you're right. So it might be next turn, actually. But I'm not sure. I don't think you would play it next turn, even if you proxy it. I think you play Lothar on Kerr before that, um, and then try to hunt Monster Hero Power. I think if you want to check for trap, you'd attack North Shore face though. So. Yeah, you do. You do. You do. Oh, apparently. Unless not. it feels oh. like uh, explosive. Proking it now is no. I don't know. That no. that was weird. I mean, explosive or no? It, even if it was bear trap, you could deal with it. Yeah, so exactly. That's. I think, generally speaking, you're right. It would have been better to attack the face. Yeah. One more stage in. Actually, he's oh, just uh, he just wants to clear. I mm -hmm. guess uh, he's gonna play this slow. So even he might even have thought it was a snake trap and just started clearing. That also does. All make right. Sense. Well, um, I don't know. I I still. Uh... Oh, now he has juggler unleash combo, which is pretty Ooh, good. Yeah, yeah. But I, I still kind of like the houndmaster. I'd probably go for the Unleash because you never know when uh, they'll have three minions again. Uh, yeah. Well, if you get Lucky Juggles, the answer is never. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, oh, that's to the not... face. Face? Uh, this one's going to face, though. Really? No? Okay, that was okay. kind of bad. Um, what? Yeah. But at the same time, um, at least he still can help. You can choose to control that or kill off the cleric. It's still fine. I would probably just kill off the cleric here and uh, go face with the rest. Yeah, you still have to. You, have to, you still have to win this game. It's you, true. You can't kill both of those right now, so you have to decide. And I think the cleric is better to kill off because the shrinkmeister is probably gonna trade with the um, uh, knife juggler anyway. I think you, it feels like you lose so many beasts too by yeah. trading into the shrinkmeister. Yeah. And if you want to follow up with houndmaster and you leave only one beast on the field. It's not, it's not just one beast, just one creature is really a thing because Kalenta has been playing this game where he wants to remove every single thing off the board right. and he's doing it one creature at a time regardless. So you don't want to lose four of your creatures into his. True, true. You're right. Well, uh, at least uh, the secret's out of the way here. Um, is, is it, do you feel okay parting ways with Power Word Shield and then Power Word Shield? Stuff? Power Word. Shadow Pain. Oh, Shadow Pain. Pain. Uh, the thing is that now that he picked up the Shrinkmeister, he feels like he could really just use that combo with the Shadow Word Pain for, on a, like Lothab or something. He doesn't really want to mm. waste it here. Uh, well, Lothab on a really check. work too well. What? Oh yeah, right. Yeah, nine, yeah nine. but not not the turn right. that turn. But you know, yeah, you, you can't really kill a Lothab right now um, with anything. Do you think maybe Valens is uh, pretty good? Just Valens hit yeah. the juggler. I like yeah, I like Valens uh, and uh, heal probably. Or you, you can play Cabal next turn. So take a doggy. Yeah, and kill another other doggy. He's gonna go ahead and uh, just put up more minions on the board. I mean, the odds of him having Lothab anyway is not that high. Oh, right this now. play you Valen something, right? Yeah. Valen. Okay. High health on both yeah. of them. Doesn't want to get Ooh. exactly for something like science target. But that wow. is a pretty good draw. That, yeah, yeah, that is a very good draw. Um, he's gonna be able to kill off both. He can he can clear have a three three charging doggy. Yeah. And uh, the owl hound master. He's not gonna use the bow though, but that's okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure you used the bow and kill off the three two uh, with your doggies. Yep. 
how many? How often do these priests run Shadow Madness nowadays? For some, uh, pretty not rare. often. Pretty rare from yeah. what we've seen in the tournament. At yeah, least. yeah, it's it's not a card uh, that's in the meta right now. That used to be the card to kill Houndmaster. You would counter it. Yeah, for time. sure. Uh, but you, there's it's so hard to fit that card um, into your uh, Dragon Priest because you need so many dragons. Like there's so many staples in Dragon Priest that you need to have. Uh, yeah, you just can't have cards. Yeah, you can't have priest cards in your priest uh, dragon. Too many dragons. Yeah. Well, you do have some priest cards. If you're Kalento, in fact, he has all priest cards. It's just uh, you know, priest works so well off of like zooming down the board, but um, it, priest just has too many important class cards. It's, mm. it's almost as many as druid. I'm a bit surprised he didn't go for the cabal value there. I don't uh, want to take that much damage, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it's only one damage less <laughs> by not taking the owl and shadow painting the dog. Uh, yeah, I guess that's assuming your opponent will go for that. But then I think he's like evaluating that he can get board presence by the way mm -hmm. he can use Vulgin the following turn. Mm -hmm. So that way he can like easily like okay if he goes phase and he plays like a minion, I can Vulgin and get ahead on the board. I think he's gonna try for the snipe on the whelp. Yeah, seems like it. Oh, no, he's going for the, the, oh, the, the double snipe. juggle. It's not really a snipe, then. Oh, ooh, okay, that was a snipe. Headshot. Ne never say never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he's going to play around Holy Nova here. I'm not sure if... Um, yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, of course, you trade, because otherwise he just trades with your knife juggler. Knife mm -hmm. juggler actually represents at least four damage if it stays alive, right. so it's... It's actually a lot of more damage than people think. Um, oh, whoa. That's so bad. You know, yeah. it is also. Um, he was playing around Cabal. At Cabal should have yeah. priest as well. And the fact that priests have a lot of uh, buffing spells, yeah. uh, since clearing is really good. Right now, like this is a really awkward play. For it seems like Lotha will just seal out the game. Yeah, because to come back from that bad of a board situation as a priest, you actually need a spell. Yeah. You you could go for a um, Vol'jin here and like uh, heal and hope that you don't get knife juggled down. I think actually that's better than a Cabal. Yeah, I think so because you can fit in a heal and uh, it trades with the uh, Lothab and uh, other. It also puts you in position actually top deck a Holy Nova. Yeah, assuming he As, runs that. I don't know yeah. if he runs that. Or not. I think yeah, all the Dragon Priests have one at least. Okay, yeah. yeah. Because you just, don't have Pyromancer, so he has like, you're lacking AoE. Yeah, I know, but he's running cards like Shrinkmeister that not every Dragon Priest is running, and yeah. Shadow Ward Pain, so it's mm -hmm. like... Um, I think... Um, I don't recall if... I think Dragon Priests all run one Shadow Ward Pain. Mm -hmm. yeah. But Shrinkmeister is not uh, a card it's that everyone wants. No. Yeah. It's, it's one of those really interesting things, too, is I think we've seen... I'm not sure if it was Kalanto or even Killer, the guy who also brought Priest. But they, I think like someone was running double Cabal, double Shrinkmeister. Ooh. Oh, I guess the jugglers. All the well. jugglers have been like sniper jugglers today. Yeah, but he... Yeah, that's, no, that's, that's over. It. Yeah. There's no it's, way. It's close. Not enough mana. Not enough of a lot of things there. Yeah. Alright, well, Kalento tried to control the board, but uh, the Hunter was just a bit more efficient at it. Uh, when Kalento really needed the cards to swing back the game, he got cards that did absolutely nothing. Yeah, it, he had a pretty decent start too, um, with some early game curve, which is often what betrays the priest the most. Um, but it's like you said, he didn't get that dragon early on. Warmer Agent wasn't able to have maximum impact, mm -hmm. and then uh, and then drawing that owl uh, on that turn was really big to win the board, which yeah. is what priest invests so much into doing. And also, I don't think Kibler's lost the game yet at uh, ATLC finals. Really? <laughs> really? Yeah. Didn't he go two zero yesterday, and then it was one zero? Uh. That's a really good question. I think he did. Huh. Oh, yeah, yeah he might have actually, yeah. So he's keeping up his Master of Duels reputation. <laughs> huntering people down. It's pretty good stuff. <laughs> well, it takes kids to win that 5k. You think Kibler's like, so so easy, so easy to win games, Trump, what's going on? <laughs> Trump shirt. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Trump has one notebook and zero wins. Mm. Kibler has zero notebooks and one win. Whoa. Hmm. Weird correlation there. Just put yeah, point try harding out. doesn't always pay off. <laughs> Don't reinforce bad habits. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, it's kind of a bad loss for Kalenta because you have the incentive to uh, to play one of the other players here, which kind of yeah. limits the deck options. Uh, the other players don't have quite as polarizing classes, I believe. Um, Striker has the mid-range pally, and yeah. Ecop has the mid-range hunter. 
I don't know, he, 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 won the he has, yeah. he has the, no, he has the zoo. 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 I think, I think, mm-hmm. uh, so they're, they're, those are a little bit polarizing, uh, actually. Is it uh, more actually. okay to send you cop now that the hunter's gone for the, the zoo? Mm. Or do you, because like, yeah, then you can alternate and you can avoid Clento being benched. But then you do have that situation where E cops uh, eliminated, uh, eliminated, just done for the day. Yeah. And then you have to send through in Clento. Well, th- there's always this like awkward spot in, in, I think, in how you want to set up your check marks. Yeah, I think uh, actually they'll just send out Clento's patron here. Because uh, Peyton is like a free win and, and he needs to unbench, uh, like he needs to not have Colento in a bench spot, you know. Uh, he's sending out, they won't expect it. Okay. And uh, Green Patron just usually gets a win no matter what, unless they're playing like Green Patron. <laughs> well, the winning deck of the tournament uh, has been Hunter, so. Really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's like a better win rate. Right? Dis- despite Frozen Ice not doing so well with Face Hunter. Oh, you're talking about like the whole league? The whole league. Oh, not yeah. here. Okay. Um, well, here actually, here, Hunter's done. I don't even I know if it's won, lost much. Yeah. It's, only, it's the only games it hasn't won when, is uh, when it magically disappeared from Nylon's roster. Oh, it really? <laughs> as much. Mm. Yeah. Rigged. <laughs> yeah. Um, Always rigged. So, though. I mean, the patron, What? how does it, how does it do against uh, Priest? It's probably not that great against Priest. It's uh, a mirror against the other patron. Uh, it's actually pretty fine against Priest. Uh, yeah. Because Priest is pretty slow, so you get a lot of time to recycle and uh, get a good pit, uh, Emperor. Mm. It's a problem when they get the... Wait, didn't like, Kibler beat a patron with his Priest The The 3-6 the Taunt Dragon. For or was it Kalento? Kalento with his Priest. Yeah, the 3-6 Taunt Dragon is a re- really good card. Like, yeah. it, it, It's a breaking point. It has 6 health and like uh, there are some other cards as well, but there's no Light Bombs in... Uh, in uh oh, the priest. Priest. yeah all right uh well actually maybe so maybe valley town anticipated the patron warrior actually sent out the priest uh, but it's going to be a priest mirror and i believe kalento um i know kalento has light bomb as well which is actually kind of a tech choice for the dragon priest these he, days oh yeah it's so he, he has the light bomb and he has the cabal and i think that gives him uh, a slightly better uh edge against kill this priest mm-hmm. uh at the same time there's like Light bomb is not super good against priests because they have more health than attack damage. Right. All the dragons and the dragon synergy cards, they always have more health. Right, but if, if one player has light bomb, the other doesn't, the other one just doesn't have any chance to come back in the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he has other minions instead of the light bomb, assuming. Uh the Cabal though is really, really good in mm. this matchup. Uh it can steal a lot of stuff uh from the other dragon priest. Yeah. Especially with Shrink Mice yeah. and stuff. You can steal Twilight Guardian. You can even steal your Sarah if it gets that late in the game. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, do we know that he's running Ysera? Or any... I, I, I it's pretty common. We, we saw Ysera in one of the mulligans. I think it was in Kalento's deck, actually. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Because that's a pretty and common card. Gara is running Ysera and Confessor Paltris. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he won with it yesterday. Yeah. Well, okay. What, what that Confessor Paltris could have been a core hound. And he well, what did he won. get? Uh, he got a scenarios. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Oh. Which is still pretty That's good. Five, eight, yeah? yeah, not bad. It wasn't Pagel. It wasn't Pagel. <laughs> so that's a pretty good start there from Kibler. Oh, Kibler is also running Light Bomb then. I, I just Kibler don't think we've seen it yet. Bomb. Okay. So both players have Light Bomb. Oh, really? That's interesting. I don't think we've seen Cabal from Kibler yet, though. Wow, that's a really good start. That's a great curve. Yeah. Great. Kalento the only thing is that he, Cabal uh, plague he, again. He does yeah. end up running out of dragons if he plays a Twilight uh, Twilight Whelp, and then he doesn't have another one for Twilight Guardian to become. Uh, Are you kidding? Sick. Kibler's gonna pick up some dragons. Yeah, so. the, the, the dragons go to Kibler. The thing is that he can play the agent next turn, and then on the th- on his turn three, he could actually play No Shike and heal if he doesn't get another dragon. So he gets yeah, like, yeah, he gets to buy some time that way. Uh, both players just. Throwing out the taunts. Yeah, this is where it just starts getting weird. Um, and then there's a whole like North Shire Cleric healing thing, and sometimes you draw too many cards, so you have to make sure not to. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I think Kilt was the only person who might draw too many cards right now. Clinto would love so, some cards right now. Yeah. There is like a realistic thing where like you have you you definitely want to draw cards early on to get the advantage of mm-hmm. resources, but you don't want to draw too many more. So like. I don't think that's the case actually in this. I mean, that used to be the case in Control Priest because mm-hmm. uh, it'd be so risky to to like just play a Northshire and then your opponent just plays 
circle heals with pyros and stuff. Okay. But it, it just doesn't get that crazy. Is it because the match just becomes such, so like board tempo dependent? Right, right. Yeah. And and you can't overdraw your opponent very easily. Yeah. One, one of the exceptions in the past in the control of Priest Mirrors was the uh, Injured Blade Master tempo plays, and that right. can just like blow you out. So I'm guessing this is like that, but... <laughs> I just you know. to always get double power too. Yeah, I don't think you, it's the play here though. I think you'd rather heal, because you don't want to play that Twilight Wealth um, right. anyway. Would you bump into the other? One? I think he just wants cards desperately, so I don't think I'd blame him here either. Yeah. That's but this is awkward because you you want that Twilight Whelp in your hand if you can get something like mm -hmm. the Twilight Guardian or. Oh man, this is looking so good for Kipper. Yeah. Because the thing is, like, you you think, Colin is probably thinking all I have to do is stall, and then I just cabal something, and then I start winning. Mm -hmm. But Kibler has a cabal too. It's not going to work. If yeah. Kibler's winning by enough, the cabal trade is going to lose Colin to the game. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, we're gonna see a heal here for sure. Coining out the Twilight Guardian doesn't really help because the other one still has taunt and will get killed. Uh, also, there's no buff on the Twilight Guardian. I also think you might even consider just trying to save your coin for the Cabal. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's really good, as, as we said before, especially with the Trigmeister as well in your hand, so you can coin that combo out on turn 7 if you would like. Um, but yeah, going for the heal here doesn't really matter. Okay. I think with this he wants to maybe um, represent a Holy Nova to put a lot of pressure on Kalento's next play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be dangerous too. Uh, if you lose the board one to get into this kind of deck, there's just not many catch-up mechanics outside of that light bomb. And He's thinking about coining the Power Word Shield to try to draw into a dragon to play the 3-6 next turn. Yeah. But at the same time, he could just do that next turn. Yeah, he, just, he can Power Word Shield and then coin mm -hmm. Twilight Guardian. Alright. Um, well, Kalenta doesn't have too much of a play here. It's obviously the Shrink Meister play, but uh, really the question is, do you do you care to heal? Probably not. I think you just Shrink Meister pass. Well, you should what heal you yourself so you can bluff Frost. Uh, okay, because, yeah, yeah. You get a free kill. Yeah, the obvious, yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty easy to take. Yeah. But the problem is that, as you said, the North Shark Cleric, so you can't really heal your own minion. Uh, your opponent will draw a card, but... Is it still worth it? Probably not. You still can't kill it in the current board state. Mm -hmm. So why would you why would you heal it, right? Yeah. I guess you would be afraid of Valence Chosen, perhaps? No, you're still afraid of Holy Nova, which is what Kibler tried to represent. Mm. Right? So if he has if he has Holy, Holy Nova, Nova, you get really wrecked. Yeah. I think actually the Dark Cultist is better, just because uh, you want to maximize the or if, if Use your man efficiently, rather. Yeah, I can see that. Because you don't want to heal. Oh, the wow. You don't want to heal, for sure. All right, so we thought about saving coin for Cabal, but coin on the Blackwing Corruptor is a clear. Big. It is, uh, but I'm pretty sure we will just see a Twilight Guardian here. Uh, well, it's it, not going to have taunt, so I'm not so sure, actually. Yeah, there's no other dragon in his hand. Oh, right. There's, yeah, there's and no then you actually, lose your yeah, next turn play, right? That is so that's actually. terrible, actually. Yeah, he actually doesn't have any more dragons, so that's bad. Uh, he might consider power chilling first, uh, keeping his Twilight Whelp alive. Mm -hmm. He can also keep it alive with the Shrink Meister, but if he's winning, you can just save the Shrink Meister Cabal combo. Uh huh. Which steals pretty much almost everything in this deck. Yeah, uh, actually, Blackwing everything that's not Velvet, basically. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Oh, wait. Yeah, this yeah, is the correct yeah, play yeah, for the Blackwing Corp. I think it's just too powerful. Yeah, he does have the power shield to curve out next turn yeah. if he picks up another dragon it's, with the Twilight It's powerful, guard. but uh, for board control, minion quantity is so important, and he's only ending with one minion here. Yeah, yeah but it demands such a response where he can trade and take initiative onto the board too. Oh, that's... Uh... I don't think he's going to death though, I think it's going to be the yeah, easier. It's, it's way too efficient to pass up on. Uh, even if he does buff that with stuff, you can still kill it, so... Yeah, but this is what you're afraid of. You're afraid of any kind of buff that can really <clears throat> allow him to skimp that. Well, yeah. here you can shrink Meister, trade and heal, but that seems a bit wasted. Yeah, yeah he wants to get out of the Guardian. Actually, you might consider Dragon Sorcerer here first because there's nothing on the board anyway. Um, but how sure are you that your opponent doesn't have Shadow Madness? You're like pretty sure, but why would you throw a game? 
Yeah, I guess. But I think the thoughts also. I, th I that think they've you... seen all the cards already. They've seen so... most of them, yeah. and I think the logic could be that if you play a Twilight, Gar if you leave two Twilight Guardians in your hand, one of them won't get the buff. Versus if you play one now, you can choose to play one before the other, so that right. way it gets the thirty-six. Right. Well, still pretty uh, dire for Kalento. I mean, it's 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 it's, that, it's always at the tipping point, but it doesn't seem to go over yet. So mm -hmm. it's like it's not like completely hopeless at the moment, but it is one of those scenarios where he has to you know, draw try heal damage. death. Yeah, it's oh gonna, god, it's a cute play. Yeah, it's all right. It's a mana efficient play. Yeah, <laughs> I, also cute, kawaii. So yeah. yeah, he's one mana away from. Um, Doing the shrink my city ball combo next turn, um, Colento that is. Mm -hmm. So I can do it right back. Yeah, <laughs> it's also kind of hilarious. It is, and it's like you were talking about Crip. The fact that you have the board while you're the one right. making the big tempo play means that you're always it's, ahead. It's like uh, it's like the mind control trade. Mm -hmm. It's where oh. that's a good one. Yeah, sure. it's where uh, you know one one player is winning, but he has one big creature that's susceptible to mind control. Right. But if you're holding mind control, you don't care. Yeah. Because while the mind control trades are happening, you're pushing you're for pushing face damage. damage. Yep. So it's a very similar situation with the Cabals. This is a very awkward turn for Colento. Uh, you might just consider playing a naked Cabal here, uh, since you have two anyway. It's the best. Why is that better than uh, the Twilight Guardian, you think? Because uh, the Twilight Guardian costs less. Both of, like, the, the Cabal is going to die if you place it, and the Twilight Guardian is going to die, but at least uh, you can have a more efficient turn later on if you save the Twilight Guardian. Yeah. Because it's four mana compared to the six mana. I, you cannot use your mana to heal anyway this turn. So. I, I agree in that sense, but you have the Shrinkmeister combo for Cabal. I think you can save one for a Cabal and you can assume the other one's just going to land. So I think the value in Cabal is just too high to waste it here. Mm, you, you have, we have seen uh, one agent, Wormus agent from both players, oh. right? Mm -hmm. That is a really good... That's nasty. Second Blackwing Corruptor from Kibler. Yeah. Yeah, but Kalento's going to steal the but fresh. He's, he's, yeah, fresh exactly. Dragon. He's not too disappointed in that because now he gets a full HP uh, Twilight Guardian. And well, or so he thinks. Yeah. Or so he thinks. Yeah, or so he thinks. I mean, we, exactly. we understand that. Yeah, this we isn't know that he has now. the same combo coming right back. Uh, it's like, all right, on the, on, yeah. the, on a high here for like all of ten seconds. Right. And then what's actually funny thing is that it trades perfectly like on board as well. Yeah. And then back, basically back at square one. <laughs> no, you're worse because uh, your opponent. Uh, like Kibler gets a better trade than you. Actually, he has more minions as a result. Before he had right. two, so um, you 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 have the same play while you're behind and you lose value. Ooh. All right, that's not okay. a bad card. Um, it's not it's not too great. Oh yeah, it is actually. Yeah, you can, it is. But you're you're one mana off. Yeah. I think you might, Ysera. But it's still it's still um, I think it's fine uh, to do it now. Uh, uh, I don't know. I think you do, Ysera here. Because the possibility of Ysera awakens is. Could also just change the game. I think you can afford it. Even if you damage. don't get your Sarah Awakens, you set up a good Holy Nova uh, Corruptor probably. next turn. Yeah, but right. if he heals that 3 2 uh, or trades it with your Sarah, <sighs> that's not good. Yeah, he's probably gonna trade the, both the um, 3 2 here and kill it off, and then the Holy Nova mm -hmm. becomes pretty bad. Oh, that's a good card. Yeah, yeah that's a really good card. Ooh, do you wanna. Yeah, you can. Mm, Would you, you kill just, your Sarah? Just. If you wait one turn, you can Venom Chosen on the Ysera. If you wait one turn, you throw turn. the game to uh, another uh, Awakens, Ooh, though. I don't yeah. know if you want to do that. Yeah. That's so greedy, it feels like. Yeah, but at the same time, you, if you just play the Dragon King Sorcerer here and go face with everything, it's still just a 1 in 5 to get the Ysera's Awakening. Um, you have but it you're twice, so twice ahead. Over, twice over. Why would yeah, you risk twice. it? Yeah. I, I, I mean, this is also game. like kind of risky, like just uh, trading true. like so much damage. Everything Twelve damage, soft. yeah. Like you're playing right into Holy Nova, uh, unless you heal here. <laughs> well, I mean, you can play cleric and heal, so you can draw. Yeah, I think cleric and heal is it kind of helps the Holy Nova issue because yeah. the the North Shire won't die. Ooh, interesting. He decides to keep the taunt instead of the four one. No, that's that the player on life bomb. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, very nice. So, how much? I think you still have to do the. Yeah. Actually, maybe maybe you cabal. Can you cabal and do anything relevant? No, you can't. 
Uh, no, you need 11 um, mana to do something I mean, like that. You can that. kebab and play Laughing Sister. Um, Again, but... we, need, we need relevant plays. Yeah. <laughs> it's like... Yeah, hypothetically, you could do that. Yeah. yeah, I would probably just like Holy Nova and Blackwing Corruptor here. Mm -hmm. The Twilight. Yeah, like... the Twilight for sure. Mm -hmm. Then you have 5-4 against... Uh, I guess it does die to the board, but at the same time, the board is not uncontrollable. And like the health are still like at a pretty healthy state to the point where like he is not the worried point of pushing for damage yeah i wonder what he's really uh deciding here i mean if if, it, if you're correct and it's like that's his only holy nova that is his chance to play back on the board outside of light bomb mm -hmm. yeah and it's like you have to really time it correctly because then your opponent knows you don't have holy nova. oh that's bad yeah speaking of which I mean, this is also a Shadow Word Death opportunity. Yeah. He has to. He doesn't necessarily need to. And he can also just... Right. Start with I, think right. I think you're right. I think you're right. You're not going to play the Venom Chosen. Like, you want to play the Venom Chosen on Dragon King Sorcerer, right? Oh, Apparently not. That stops it from being Cabal, too, actually. So he actually is... Well, this is weird. He's not using Death. He just wants to draw a lot of cards. Okay. I thought you wanted to use your Death because... The priest doesn't really have any much five power minions in these decks, and like mm -hmm. Black and Corruptor is really like one of the few uh, targets yeah. you can actually. I kind of, I kind yeah, of agree you with you there, though. but like, th this is playing out a lot like Arena. Like, I feel like I've played this game a hundred times already. Yeah. And often the best thing you could do in Arena in like the very drawn out control matches is just draw more cards because if bad stuff happens, you're still winning. Mm -hmm. Right. You have the more resources Unless, to go longer. Yeah. Most the fatigue here. <laughs> Nine, I mean, nine cards is still a pretty decent amount. Yeah, yeah. It's... Relative to some of the power, but he also doesn't have any minions in his hand. It's like one of these things that priests do run out is like if it ever goes to fatigue, sometimes you're holding those Shadow Word Deaths and they're just like literally the last three cards and they can't do anything. I guess he was playing around Kabal as well by doing that on the North Shire Clary. Yeah, that's also fair. So, yeah, that's very much that's the idea. Um, well, the four health guy is kind of like an all in play. Uh, if Kibler is running another, oh god! Well, I can Shadow Word Death that, so you can add uh, the. You can just kill it though. Chosen. Yeah, I guess you can too. You can you can balance your taunt here. Yeah, and then the, the three five wouldn't be able to do anything. Yeah, and then draw more cards. That still gives you room to play a couple of other minions as well. How long is he gonna hold on this Drag Kid Sorcerer? Maybe just because he wants Dragon Synergy, so he wants yeah. to make sure. Yeah, I mean, that he, gets he should have card. like Black and Corruptor still in the deck. Uh, no, Kibler's used both by now, I believe. Oh, um, have sure. they used one each? Uh, Kibler, I believe he's used both, but maybe oh. I'm wrong. I mean, it's kind of hard because the POVs do flip. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh wow, Dang. that's a good one. Wow. Four damage, right? Yeah, yeah four yeah, damage. Yeah. But it's also the full heal, now he completely plays around the light bomb. Wow, he's actually drawing a lot of cards though. Yeah. And he's he's at nine, so he won't overdraw. Yeah. Well Jin not doing anything. Not bad. There. What? What do you mean? You can heal the Drake. Uh, yeah, but he knows that he has uh Shadow Word uh, Deaths in his hand right now. Yeah. He's he's so sure of it. He hasn't used a single one and uh, I so don't think it matters. Gonna... Is there a better play than that? You have to no. play something. No no of course not, but it's not both. doing much. Would you play really? the both Dragon Kin and the Volgen? If you had a Holy Nova, that would be great. You no, know, I think you, you just give him a card. Oh. I think right now you're just desperate enough yeah, that you, like you need to fatigue yeah, him a bit. Yeah, he's gonna discard a card here. Uh, yeah. It's 10 cards right now. Oh, uh, that what a card. Uh, wow, that's pretty good for Kibler. Yeah, so here we're gonna see the Shadow of Death most certainly come down. Uh, probably a Lothab as well. Would you, uh, would you ever consider killing off your cleric before you shadow word death or are you still not really scared of fatigue at all uh no i don't think so you're not afraid of um going into fatigue when you have this much of a card advantage okay uh playing yeah, the you're threatening lethal agent. here that makes me threaten lethal yeah placing the cabal though but uh, it's like, oh man ah uh, that well now he, he still has a way to stay alive with the cabal yeah right yep he does well no he's dead because of uh, uh, yeah. Shadow Word Pain, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, he, in terms that. of what we used to... He has to Cabal and heal to stay alive, which I don't think he will. He'll Cabal and play Dragonkin? Yeah, I think he'll... I, I think that's the best play. I think he'll make that and lose. <laughs> but I, th I wonder if he's putting Kibler... There's so many ways for his opponent to deal with it, too. Like, he could have his own uh, Cabal again, number two, and he could also have a Shadow Word Pain. I think double Cabal is really a heavy tech choice, though. It, yeah, it generally is nowadays. 
All right, well, uh, Kibler does take it. Two, Two games, games in a row, Kibler. no losses again. And this then is the master of duels. Kalento will be introduced to the bench. Yeah. Bench Lento. Bench Lento. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm pretty sure that Kalento doesn't know. I mean, Kalento's one of those guys who uh, he actually just needs to be told what to do. He doesn't really use to care that much. Mm -hmm. So he probably doesn't even feel that bad for being at the bench. He'd be like, oh, okay, I'll just sit over here. It's fine. Uh, I guess so, but uh, yeah, it was a pretty interesting game. I think there was uh, there was some really good play from both players. A lot of players try to play around stuff, and you could see yeah. um, Kalento, who was the player that was behind every single turn, would play just like slightly more risky plays yeah. than uh, than Kibler did, and that was of course because of the situation they were in. So I think yeah. both players played you know, extraordinarily well, uh, and uh, really just Kibler had the better start, and it's uh, it's a priest creature based deck the better start gives you the win uh, absolutely so now uh clown nine has clown Zoom. nine yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. did i say that Shots <laughs> I, I, did i say that i, I said, thought you did I, I, you said clown nine you're so red right now <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they have a Sue and uh, <laughs> no, no, no. it's like a peach right now. It's crazy. But I'm not okay. So, <laughs> um, yeah, Sue and yeah. Uh, mid range Paladin, right? Mm. So uh, they need to win this. I would assume they're gonna go ahead and play Sue here, uh, try to unlock Colento again. But um, do you, do you really feel the mid range Paladin has any matchups that are really that awful? Uh, uh, patron can still be patron. Ready. Yeah, patron pa is. But patron has to win with frothings because the the deck has a million clears, right? Uh, I mean, you can just like. I mean, you have to have the clears. Yeah, too. you have to have the mm -hmm. clears, and it's easier for the patron to build up patrons. Uh, like you don't have enough th threats in uh, yeah. Paladin to pressure the green patron. Like you sit all game and just stack up their combo. Yeah. Just wait for an emperor for like. No, no, I, I, I agree. I think I think it is favored for the patron, but I don't think it's like by that much. I think we've actually that seen Strife Crow win a few times. Yeah. Strife Crow is actually a player who's recently said that he thinks mid range paladin might even uh, be even or slightly favored. But it's also one of those things where like because he plays it a lot, yeah, he's, like, uh, biased he's super it. biased. Yeah, but yeah. I think it does come to say that maybe the matchup isn't as bad as people might feel like. Mm -hmm. Some people are like, no, it's like it's like eighty twenty. It's like yeah, maybe it's not like that crazy. Yeah. Yeah. No. But I feel like Sue actually has a few good matchups. Uh, I wonder. Echo is the team captain. He decides. <laughs> I think he's the team captain um, by default based off of uh, how much they care. I think Strife <laughs> How Crow, much they care. I mean, they, they, they both obviously care, like Clento and Strife Crow, but like for them, they're more like relaxed guys. They don't get really tilted or rattled. And he cops yeah. more of like the emotional guy who really loves, he loves like, the team aspect of stuff. Remember, you remember the fight night days? Like he was yeah. super into it. Mm -hmm. So this is like Ecop's jam for sure. Guys like Clanto. I feel like Amaz is way too happy when he sends a player to the bench. <laughs> Where's the bench? Yeah. Oh, it's it's downstairs. Oh, look at that smile. It's like guys, yeah, you just be here. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the turning away smile. <laughs> <laughs> An Amaz classic. Clanto is not used. No. No. All right. Well, uh, it is evened up. It is two and two. Uh, but suddenly, Valley Town is in the uh, favorable position. I think. Wait, um, Killers got benched. I am pretty well, sure. Really, I, I guess in the well, sense yeah, that he's, he's not allowed. He's to gone. Play. Yeah. yeah. So he's, he's in his bench in his hotel that, room right now. That's what he's rewarded now. for with good play. <laughs> benched. <laughs> there it is. Colento is the one that's benched. Yeah. I think um, so far in this finals, the longest bench session has always been one game. Whenever someone's been benched, they immediately mm -hmm. get taken off. Yeah. And it hasn't been as impactful as it was in the uh, the online portion of the tournament. Um, I think that's just circumstance, though. I think when you're in this position where you can only play two decks versus four, it's really bad. Yeah. It just so happens they, that they they've had, won out of that. Yeah, but they, I think it's less likely. They have to assume now that they're going to go with the secret paladin here, and they are going with the secret paladin mm -hmm. because that's the, what like the one of the easiest decks for Green Patron. So. Knowing that they will go for this uh, secret paladin, uh, they're going for the Sulok, which is a better play than uh, the mid range one against the uh, secret paladin, in my opinion. Um, yeah, didn't Strafko beat secret paladin yesterday though? No, he lost. No, to it. oh, he lost to yeah, it. Yeah, he lost to Eloise. 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 Yeah. Oh, that's right. But that was yeah. like a super crazy close game. Wasn't yeah, it? it was very. Yeah. Very yeah. Cool. I mean, yesterday I had a lot of close games. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Trump feeling the uh, the heat there from last night. Hard. Yeah. Party Trump. Trump. 
Trump, uh, he, he's been going pretty ham. Yeah, someone actually spiked his drink yesterday. Yeah, so I heard. <laughs> and there were, a lot of, there were a lot of ladies, and there was a hot tub. There's a lot of bubble yeah. baths and stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. Trump was living life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, yesterday, Trump was actually Trump W. He was just grinning, <laughs> cheesing all day. All right, well, it is Ecop versus Trump, the rematch. Uh, knowing Ecop, he's yeah. he's going to talk about this victory forever if he beats <laughs> Trump twice in like yeah. 30 minutes. Yeah, actually, he will talk about it forever. So yeah. go Trump! <laughs> <laughs> now, in this case, uh, it, it's just cool to see that, uh, you know, they're able to really try to use his power and do corner. But, if he, I mean, Ecop's been in this position before, right? Right, it's, he got out of the horrible position they were in right. last, last night, and yeah, then they actually Shrefko, won because of Shrefko it. Shrefko got benched, and then yeah. Ecop was forced to play the Warlock. And uh, Yeah, if he lost, they were, like, lost, done. Like, he was, he was literally bad. cornered. Mm -hmm. They needed three more wins, but Ecop was the only person who could play as Warlock. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. And he came out of that with I was a win immediately. I was, I was talking about this to Strife Crow. He's like, no, it's not that big of a deal. We would have won anyways. He's like, how do you know that? He's like, no, we would have won. And he's just like, I'm like, why? That's how the dice works. I'm, and I'm, like, I'm like, why, Strife Crow? He's like, because we're better than you. Like, okay. Wow. Well, so both players with a decent start here. Uh, I one really drop. like the Paladin one. Yeah, the problem is here, it doesn't have a one drop, so... If Echo is lucky here with the Night Jugglers coming from the Haunted Creeper, uh, this is going to be pretty hard. The this thing is, is though, if, if he's not lucky, he yeah. loses the game, yeah, right? Yeah, he does. Yeah, exactly. So this is like, this game is pretty much decided <laughs> like right juggles. there. Yeah, on the juggles. Um, he should actually kill the Night Juggler, uh, but it's not It's one out of four. To. It's not... Like, this is 75% like Ecop wins the game, 25% mm -hmm. Trump wins the game. Yeah. And there's like a 10% worth of possible comeback. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. that's it. That, that's pretty much the math for the whole game. <laughs> so I don't know what he's thinking about here. Uh, he's afraid of him having a knife juggler. Um, but but really, the payout is so high. Yeah, you cannot play anything but the knife juggler here, really, I think. You just have to hope that there is no answer for this. Trump knows. Yeah. The so, blowout potential is just so high. Uh, Ecop e had the best juggles in, in the first game. Let's see if this continues. Let's see here. First juggle. One. Uh, yeah, oh, game over. <laughs> game over. Game <laughs> over. So the problem is that the knife juggler is still on the board and uh, these recruits are very juicy targets for... Yeah, you know. but it's it's like, it's not it's not completely over yet. No, like, no. Second muster is still pretty if, good. If he gets there. a one drop here, oh, he doesn't. Oh, it, that's a really good. It is that's a really good. Right, but if he got a one drop and cleaned out mm -hmm. the guys, he would have had the juggler alive for implosion, and yeah, there's right. there's no chance at that point. Yeah, but you're saying yeah. the game was already over. But it's like it's it's pretty pretty horrible though. Yeah. It's it's a it's a rough situation. But um, one thing that like Ecop drawn pretty awkwardly outside of. Oh this. wait, he didn't get a good juggle. He did. No, no, he traded no, his one one. In. He traded his one one. Oh, really? He missed. It went face. It went face. Oh god. Oh, some hope. Oh, never mind. Double divine favor. Well, but I mean, some interesting and Yeah. So, do you want to play the redemption here? It's like you don't really want to get a dude redeemed, right? Um. But I guess since you had divine favor, yeah, but yeah. Gonna dump I, I'm not sure if you want to play divine favor until after you played your. Uh, it screws up some of the yeah, secrets. Yeah, you get. You don't want to draw your secrets ever. Mm -hmm. So, there's the redemption. Game. That was an avenge that would be. I don't know about implosion here. I think the the creeper does a better job. Yeah, I would probably play creeper and. and oh, never mind. Oh, oh God. of course, of course, it was four. Yeah. Consecration off the top. No. No. I'm not sure. Uh, have we seen a consecration from Trump? Because uh, there are some versions that yeah. cuts. Yeah. Uh, they just cut it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that noble sacrifice is all right. Hmm. But it's it doesn't really do anything. Uh, kills. Uh, well, it gets a card out of your hand for divine favor. That's true, but aren't you playing Mysterious Child next turn anyways? Right, so it gets uh, the other I mean, card out of the deck, so you don't draw it with the divine. I mean, favor. noble sacrifice sure. do a little thing here, and that's just uh, enabling the avenge for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, he could have ah, just, he could have just like ignored the the dude single on face if he knew it was avenge. But yeah, that's good. All right. Yeah. I wonder why there was some hesitation with that last guy. Mm. Like, yeah, I don't like this guy. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just know. throw him in a demon. 
Oh, He's role playing a little bit. Yeah, we're gonna see a band of doom here for sure. I think. Yeah, nothing else really comes close. So it comes to noble sacrifice into avenge. Yeah, and he's gonna try to bane a doom. Um, we're gonna whatever, whatever gets buffed. Right. Yeah. So he has to trade one minion first. And if he gets I am a turtle. Reasonably big. It's doom guard. Oh, God. The tiny knight of evil. Yeah, so now you only have to pick up like uh, so Doom Guard. Guard. <laughs> Doom Guard buffs this card. Uh, theoretically. Oh, because it could discard nothing. You're right. Okay. Okay, here we go. Doctor Six coming down. Five secrets. Five secrets. Full five. Yeah. So, uh, so it's going to be a get down. It's going to redeem the get down. It's going to avenge the six six and the competitive spirit. The six six. So it's going to be a ten and nine. Yeah, and that At Void Walker is kind of cut block that. <laughs> yeah, because the Blessing of Kings uh, it could also be big, but it's just there's only one mint target. Yeah. yeah. So well, I think it's also showing you the repercussions of the Implosion rolling for four, because like all these little small mm -hmm. minions yeah, to be able to sure. attack. It's like, also, so the, the funniest thing is that a deck that played double Divine Favor never play Silence because you can't hold cards. So there's no chance that Trump actually has a silence drawn after the divine favor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't think he can actually divine favor into anything that would even kill the void, the void one. No, I don't think so either. He needs to pick up like a true sealer off the top or something. To deal with the void walker. Yeah, yeah and that's, that's probably a one of yeah. true silver in the divine favor deck is a one of as well. Just eat everything. Things. Yeah, that's fair. That could have been a disaster if you decided to play the Void Walker first. <laughs> uh, yeah, good sequencing. Go. Why did he kill the uh, imp? Uh, consecration? I guess. But... There is no consecration. Okay, so competitive spirit, making it 10 9. I mean, consecration here would be pretty sick. Oh, yeah. we could actually get really lucky here with two Nut Jugglers on the Void Walker, but I. Yeah. Not very uh, likely. Yeah. yeah. I think you Arjun squ you, you juggler squire then divine favor get a one drop both juggles into the uh... yeah he's not he's not willing to take that risk he, yeah. he realizes that the odds of that happening is zero too low, but it might hit it once and then it's it's a waste of damage mm -hmm. he's gonna go and trade first I hope to kill after one once at least or the three two yeah uh, either just not face and not the five five. Killing off the two one ones though are better than killing off the three two. Uh, nice. Because you keep the divine shield uh, mm -hmm. alive. Well, uh. Blessing of Kings combo. He draws one card. That's good enough, favor. I think. I mean, the, the hero power is a guaranteed one. I think promise. you go. I think you go for a dude here. Actually. Yeah, I like I like the hero power. Oh no, he's going for Kings on divine shield card. Okay. Because he got rid of yeah. both one ones. Yeah. I don't think that he would have traded into the Divine Shield anyway, so... You... Wow, that was so much better than Dude or Divine Favor. Yeah. We suck. Whoa. I mean, it's more mana efficient as well, not to mention. No, it's just so threatening. Yeah. Third, 18, 19 damage. Yeah, he can take care of um, the 10, 8 here. <sighs> Double trading. I think Ecop is, uh, is all in on face right now. He's really close to killing him too. Yeah, like he's to the point where if he draws Doom Guard, he just strips like whack him for lethal. Almost, almost. almost. Yeah, but, I mean, but most likely with because of the Boombox yeah. and probably the fact that there's no Consecrate or Taunts in Trump's deck. So many. As far as, as far as he knows. So, is he trading here or is he going face? No, you go face. The thing is, if you what's, what's the consequence of going for? Well, face you, if, I guess if you kill the ten eight, yeah, Boom, he gets trades, really good trades. Really good trades. Yeah, that's the problem. And his, he also has like a lot of minions to survive, like a five five. That's. Just... But at the same time, he haven't he hasn't drawn a single power overwhelming or doom guard yet. Uh, that's true. So he might just be able to finish the game. He's going to go ahead and make these trades with I. That's actually pretty good, I'd say. That's oh! Cool. Hey, wow. Mega punish. punish. He's, he's, punish. Not, he's not playing Consecration Crypt. Wow. Oh my god. Yeah. That could Consecration. not have been better. Yep. That was definitely the best. Oh man, and these Moonbots there. have like such a e low impact for doing it. We, we need to zoom in on Ecop's face right now. So, yeah. Something's gonna happen. Oh, he's like, wait. No, he attacked the Vine Shield into Dark. His eyes are slightly bigger. Oh, there we go. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> and the boom. Scheisse. The boom sucks. 
<laughs> All right. So he has he has almost yeah. no choice. He has to top deck like a void caller and implosion for four or three or three. Yeah. Just hit, just kill off the uh, the Argent Squire. Oh, there oh, we go. All right. There we go. All right. Let's see here. Uh, here we go. I do believe that you can afford to tap here if you want to, but because um, you use both musters already. Oh my god! Use the oh, oh no! Oh my god! It needs to. Oh no! <laughs> oh, oh, my god. oh man! Electronic sports moment. Echo is not fire. amused right now. This is. Yeah, and Trump gets a huge win, <laughs> keeping Colenso on the bench. That was unlucky. Yeah. Well, if you really wow. think about it, in both their matches, like combined, yeah, Ecop had really good luck in the first yeah, one, he did, he did. and he, he started he, he pretty lucky in this one too. Mm -hmm. But like, uh, yeah, it really turned around at the very. Remember, end. he got the juggler in the very beginning, which you guys were saying like is putting him in an overwhelming favorite to win the game. Right. And then uh, at the very end, Trump gets lucky where it counts the most. Yeah. Well. Honestly, Consecrate just doesn't make an appearance in that deck, and also, I guess like, you can't count it out, man. Yeah. It has to be these weird scenarios where maybe he has it, and it ends up being the exact card against Doctor. Is Boone, that Trump smiling? What is that? Wow, that's <laughs> what weird. Is that? Yeah. WTF two Trumps. Yeah. All right. Well, that puts them in a commanding lead now. It's three, three versus two, but they have Colento. So Mid-range Paladin. Shreko has to win out mid-range Paladin. Oh, wait, no, no. Never mind. Just kidding. Because the Warlock lost, right? Yeah. yeah. Warlock, Warlock okay. can Ecop play again. can play again. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right, right. But if but he loses Ecop again. Loses, then he's benched. Yeah. And then, then the Paladin is and stuck. Then Paladin has yeah. to win for this one. So then, so then do you go with Shreko's Paladin to avoid the bench situation? I don't uh, think you have to. I don't. No, 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 no. It, it, it's actually the same thing, really. Um... They have to think like what else is uh, bad against patron here uh, of our remaining classes. Uh, what what warlock is that? That's the it's zoo. 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 Both okay. warlocks are are zoo right now. So I would assume they're gonna go ahead and play druid here. Mm. Uh, druid is oh, actually druid is not that good versus mid range paladin. Um, no. But it like the new Donatus helps a lot in this matchup. Yeah, it's hard to remove. Yeah, being able to um, get that four uh, mana creature early on is really important in this matchup because it's all about the board control really mm -hmm. i think you you really just want a win on on dog here yeah yeah i think so because if, uh, if trump wins actually no it doesn't matter if trump, if trump wins, wins dog can't get benched bench right, right. right. I think, no, I think no yeah you just play whatever you want yeah if if, if uh cloud nine decides to play uh warlock then they want to go with the the non-patron but if they decide to play paladin then they want to go with the patron so they're actually thinking like what are they playing here? Like, are, is Echo playing again, or is are they mm -hmm. switching to Stripe Crow? Like, that's what they're thinking about right now. So I would assume they're gonna go ahead and play Druid here. Um, why, why not Patron? Because wouldn't Patron be? It's kind of bad against Zoo. Yeah. yeah, it's not very good versus Zoo, especially against uh, that one with Mount Ganis and stuff. Zoo is like almost the only good matchups um, that they have for Patron anymore. So. So they'll save it for the Paladin then. Yeah, Druid is pretty weak. Um, I guess another way to look at it is like, what can you get away with now that Colento's benched? Mm -hmm. Like, what classes mm. would be the best, would be the worst against Colento? And yeah, that's tried. Yeah, patch it up. Um, and Druid would realistically be that. Yeah, I think Zoo, Zoo, I think, Zoo, Zoo too actually might be. I think Druid's probably not that good against uh, Dragon Priest though. Yeah, but what, what about like War, like Zoo Warlock against Dragon Priest and Patron? I guess you do have a pretty reasonable chance to split. But... Yeah, against the Patron at least. Yeah. I mean, that's the matchup in reverse mm -hmm. they were talking about. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. I really have a feeling Ecop's going to go again. Yeah. I think if you're tilting, it's like, S send me out there. Yeah, you yeah. know, I'm going. I'm going to try again. I think and so. And then Ecop versus Trump a third time, if that ends up having, like, oh, two God. mirrors. So, <laughs> walk, walk, walk. here we go. The most skillful Let's matchup. Let's go, boys. The best game. of three. The best of three to determine who goes... Uh, Put this apple on like your head, team. right? Yeah. I believe uh, one of them is playing Sea Giant, right? I think Trump, Trump has it in his version. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that is. Sea Giant is actually really, really good in this mirror. But uh, actually, Ecop is playing Void Terrors, which is also really, really good in the mirrors. Yeah, they are, they are for sure. But uh, Sea Giant can actually just win the game. Uh, Void Terrors can still get silenced, uh, mm -hmm. which Sea Giant can't. So Ecop needs to acknowledge the fact that 
uh, his opponent is running CJ and make make a lot of trades really. I think Ecop just keep kept this whole hand. Whole yeah, hand. this this hand is super great. Like, yeah, it's any demon he picks up will be bringing out void color value, and he gets early game board control. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm actually a pretty big uh, pretty big fan of the void terrors. I really like just. You know, whenever whenever you have an egg and then you power overwhelm it and yeah. then you void terror, it just feels so good. It's it's yeah. really good in this matchup because the only answer is really owl. Yeah. Uh, I, I like sometimes I usually just like keep the coin to be able to turn three, uh, power overwhelm and uh, void terror on yeah. an egg. Like it's you just win the games like ninety percent of the time if they don't have the owl. So mm -hmm. it's really great. He's debating whether or not he wants to keep the abusive here on turn one or if he wants to go for a void walker or flame imp. Uh, the abuse save is still good to keep, like even if you might still get that one drop, uh, but it's also an enabler for eggs and uh, haunted creepers. Mm -hmm. um, but oh, oh, there you go. There you go. The void walker. You think on. if you didn't draw the void walker, you'd play the abusive anyway? It yeah, seems a bit you weak. do because it, it trades still with the flame imp. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's not sure that your opponent will have a void walker and a flame imp. It's pretty uncommon, but he does this time. But he's just gonna go ahead and play either knife juggler or flame imp here. He's mm -hmm. not gonna go ahead and play the. Void oh, knife juggler's gonna get wrecked. Yeah, and I've got Drogo is punished by the abusive sergeant. I yeah, think... it's not really a punish though, because it doesn't survive. Like uh, playing a void walker gets punished because it right. trades and survives. Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, this still trades uh, for that, and he's going to abuse it anyway at some point. So, well, what do you think about just playing the like, haunted creeper then? Yeah, exactly. I would probably play the haunted creeper here because it's more mana efficient, and you can always just trade the haunted creeper. Later That's going to get punished by the other void walker. Yeah, it is. But you but do have the abusive. He has the abusive to, yeah. be able to go back for it. And I think you always have those one ones as long as it doesn't get silenced. Yeah. So you'd be able to use those one one targets for good abusive. The only thing that really would have punished him was like uh, Dire Wolf here because that's very mana efficient. Uh, abusive, you don't really want to play that on turn two uh, if you don't have another one drop. So it's going to go Actually, and... if he plays both the one drops and it kills the Haunted Creeper, it's really bad. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> so actually, he should have thought. This through a bit. Oh, okay. He should have actually not uh, killed the uh, Void Walker immediately and hope that one dagger would hit that, so the Haunted mm. Creeper would not have been popped, because that okay. would have actually like killed him here. So okay. he's gonna go ahead and not attack here. Yeah, he's gonna hope this more daggers give some some uh, Whoa. presence, but Iron Beak Owl. So what do you silence here? Actually, I think you might silence the Ink Gangland boss. Uh, yeah, I don't think you're really worried about the one ones because you st even if it, like the juggle lands on it, then you can. Clean I mean, it's it up, the same right? amount of. Uh, but one now if you juggle the imp right? boss, it's really bad. Wow. Yeah, exactly. Always lucky. Yeah. So uh, this is really good for, for Echo. He has mm. the implosion as well, so he's. What do you think about the the flame imp here? You you further your position on the board. I I like trading the flame imp actually, because uh, then he won't get a trade. Uh, with the imp versus the void color, yeah, or void walker rather. Yeah, you can't get through. I that. think it's worth the one, the the two damage lost, mm -hmm. uh, just to further your board presence for board presence. Especially considering the fact that you have implosion next turn. Yeah, I mean that's that's all you really want. You want yeah. to protect your knife trigger for next turn's implosion because that's just mm -hmm. a game winning play. Unless you hit for two and then hit the wrong thing twice again. Which has happened so far. Yeah, this yeah. is for e cop in the last five minutes. And the vo the void caller here also has potential. Like, if you can draw out some of those hits, it can pull out the doom guard. Yeah, and fight back for the board. But the problem is also like you were talking about when you're going for board control, you have quantity of like you know mid sized threats. It's just hard to take mm -hmm. care of all of them because doom guard can't kill them all. Mm -hmm. So now you kind of have to implosion the imp gang boss, or you could trade the flaming first with that and implosion the. It's gonna three, be like four. a two, and then juggle the void caller twice. I ca yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I kind I kind of like trading the flaming first with the imp uh, gang yeah. boss because you can actually roll a four, and that's very useful if you roll on the void caller. But it's gonna go ahead and roll. Oh, okay. four yeah. juggles. All four on the void call. Let's go. So it's not gonna go ahead and proc the. Um, Avoid the color this turn, I believe. Nope. Uh, a bit awkward the fact that it didn't kill that off. Uh, I think it's maybe gonna... the owl sack is is the way to go here. Just again to further yeah, protect your board. It might be. It might also be trading with the 
Well, he's not gonna. Yep. Yeah, he's gonna. Perfect. Go for it. Yeah, because if you don't do that, he can even yeah. activate his void caller, which is really bad. Exactly. He can still do it though if he abuses the, abusive, the void right. walker. It's kind of like well. Then no, you want to do you want to do void caller, then abuse yeah. the the void, and, you get the and then doom guard into the juggler. Yeah, exactly. So he's gonna do that play. It's uh, kind of a hipster play, you know, but uh, it's the best one. It works out here. Well, it really works oh, out. It's like yeah. pretty this is a pretty good board position. Yep, yeah, it doesn't have any more demons now though for the second void caller, but uh, you always kill the Doom Guard here before you kill the void caller. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Just in case uh, I am a turtle. Yeah, exactly. But I think uh, he's given some pretty good breathing room now because it's like he can finally. Uh, it's too bad that he can't play Dr. Boom, but uh, he still has an opportunity to tap into other demons. Ecop in the meantime. Um, yeah, he chose to play the Flame over the Abusive. I, I yeah. think that's pretty weird. Oh, he's just gonna ignore and go face, which is fine, I think. Mm -hmm. He hasn't drawn. Except for Defender of Argus, is that gonna be punishing? Uh, Defender of Argus uh, does punish because it's a breaking point uh, for the 3 4. Um, but uh, no. that's a risk you're willing to take, I think. Void Terror. Oh, that is actually not too bad considering it's a demon. But, yeah. Um, you just get it for free. Yeah. You can't. Uh, well, hold on. This, this is so games. bad. If he procs the. No, he's not gonna go and do that. Yeah. If he does it, like, Morganis will just end the game. Well, Ecop is one damage off lethal right now. The the Void Caller attacking into the Doom Guard makes his imps three threes, and then he has two damage. Nope. Oh. That is lethal. That is that is lethal right there. Yep. Um, just on board. Yeah. Slam the Doom Guard, yeah. and it is. And Kalento will be freed from the bench, but. Yeah, what, what, what's an ECOB game without a little BM at the end, right? Yeah. A little flavor. You think he's BM and I think he just hasn't figured it out yet. <laughs> I think he's wow. pretty sure. That just this is legal. No, I, 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 I think he was just made it immediately. Oh, he just discards it. Okay. It doesn't really matter. Actually, any sequence of just playing all his cards would have won the game. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. So just play it through. Yeah, there it is, and it's oh, a tie series go. three three. Ecop uh, de benches Kalento once again. Yeah, he's done for the day, so it's up to Strife Crow and Kalento to win. Yeah, it's a good feeling when you're uh, when you're actually the first one getting out of uh, your team, like winning both matches. Uh, I think he's very happy right now, and. He doesn't, I don't think he minds, um, even if they lose, I don't think he would mind his own performance, you know. Right, he's going to be very tempting, well. otherwise, I mean, if you're the weakest link, you know, mm -hmm. for, a, for a game. <laughs> right now we are doing, this is basically the uh, the seeding matches. Uh, these are the winning teams from yesterday, so they're playing for the top seed. The top seed advances automatically to the finals. Mm -hmm. So they're basically playing for $90,000 yeah, right Yeah, they're going to see top yep. two in this yep. tournament. Uh, they have to win one more game tomorrow, mm -hmm. the winner of this match, in order to get first prize. Mm -hmm. so. it's, like it's, it's just sad because you could be this close to 90 k and then you could also lose and then just go in fourth place. Yeah. And yeah. not take anything. And not take anything home. So uh, this is such a big moment for them, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. We're halfway through. Uh, six games in. That's a 3 3. The score will be updated in just a sec. Um, and we have six different classes. Oh, no, sorry. Just the, the Warriors didn't look good. It's still there. So we have five different classes. Mm hmm. Yeah. Are we favoring anybody's like three remaining line, uh, classes here if it matches up? Well, we just we just discount the patrons. They're going to get a win somehow, right? So it's about yeah. the uh, the priest, druid, warlock, paladin. It feels like both favor Cloud Nine. Like the paladin probably does pretty well against both of those, druid and the priest is... probably does pretty well against both of those. Yeah, druid is pretty good though uh, versus dragon priest actually. Uh, Why? Because it has a lot of four power minions uh, mm. that it's very hard to deal with. Okay. Uh, it also has the I believe Dog is running the Savage Combatant, which yes. uh, is him. really good versus Priest because three damage is a lot like a big breaking mm -hmm. point all, uh, mo most often than not. Okay. So I, I kind of like um, uh, Value Town's position a bit more uh, in this game. Also because of the fact that Green Patron just uh, crushes the the uh, Paladin for sure. You also have to uh, keep but, in mind, right? But but Patron doesn't crush uh, Sue and it doesn't crush Drew. It, like, yeah. it has a favorable matchup, but it's not like a free win right. all the time. So I think uh, like just based on the matchup, uh, Value Town definitely has the better chance here. But you know, they can still get like the Paladin win before it gets matched up with the Patron. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's the last deck remaining. Then you're screwed, you know. Yes. Yeah. But if you try to get it now, 
and get a free win before they uh, throw out the patron, then you have a really good chance of winning this uh, this series. Yeah, the matchups are obviously. Gonna but they're gonna expect lot. that. I think they're gonna expect that. I think they're gonna go with the dog is gonna go with the patron right away, and we're gonna see a strike to a paladin as well. We'll see. We'll see. If I um, to make a guess. That would be it. I think the one thing that that I would still factor in is just. I know RNG doesn't work this way, but I'm, I'm not counting on Dog drawing very well. This is true deck. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I see, yeah. Warrior, Warlock. Okay. So Trump decides to go again. Uh, Trump, si if Trump loses, he's benched, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, sea Giant. But this is the matchup you wanted. This is the matchup you wanted for sure, yeah. If you're uh, Trump. If you're Trump, yeah. So he's, uh, Velvet Town is happy right now. Uh, Sea oh. Giant version is not that great versus Patreon because anytime the Patreon has a lot of minions on the board and you get Sea Giant value, yeah. you most likely like that anyway because you can't really clear a lot of Patrons. You can clear maybe four Ooh. at most. With that hand though, that might be an easy Sea Giant. Uh, yeah, 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 for sure. But uh, it's hard to proc the Haunted Creeper really versus a Warrior because mm -hmm. they'll play Armor Smith, they'll play Acolytes, everything has one attack really. Uh, and then. When you can finally proc it, they already have a Despite set up to clear the one, one, one thing to keep in mind is uh, Trump was actually running the Void Void Terror. We saw it as his last draw in that mm -hmm. game. So Trump has the Void Terrors as well I as think, the Sea Giant. I think he caught Lothab from the deck. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm pretty sure we didn't see any Lothab. I'm not sure if he's running uh, Direwolf Alpha either. That might be another card he cut. That kind of phased out a bit and people phased in like Dr. Yeah. Booms and Malganus. Uh, Direwolf Alpha is usually a one-off in Sudex and some people even remove it. So I think that might be, have been a card that he removed. But let's see, the, the Star from the Warrior, you're really looking for a card draw uh, basically to get your combo and weapons of course. Does shield block count for anything? I mean, you generally don't play anything on three anyway. Uh, Acolytes. Would you on three? Like, you usually play if you have a death spite. Acolyte is actually five. pretty good versus two because they have a lot of haunted creep. <laughs> oh, wow. Got some oh, wow. That is actually. But he's got the Acolyte too, so he's yeah, good, right? Yeah, yeah, this start is actually very good. Um... <laughs> No, it's pretty good because you can answer almost any threat early. Yeah. I think one of the ways Zeus can take advantage of this matchup is early game board pressure that you can't answer completely and then you just right. take too much damage. Yeah. You'll go ahead and uh, kill that off oh, for sure. Everyone's getting in here. Yeah. Uh, eventually. Yeah. He just has the death spite in turn four into a turn five whirlwind effect. So this is looking really good for Polento. I mean, it could just simply be oh. Void Terror on the Egg in the next couple turns, Your too. And it's just disastrous, but... That's interesting. Yeah, well, he goes well, face if, if, if you go face, you just save yourself some damage, I guess. Yeah, but... Mm. Okay. Okay, so, um, Acolyte of Pain. Most, it's definitely so, going to get silenced. Yeah, uh, it will, but it is the play here, though, for Polento. <laughs> Uh, the question is if he attacks here or not. He does kill a creeper off, okay. So, he's uh, setting up for uh, the spite soon. Mm. Okay. Wants to get rid of the weapon. Yeah, with so many weapon swings, I think he's not worried too much about the efficiency of it. Just being able to get the card draw is the most important thing. Yeah. Just stalling up the game the best yeah. he can. The uh -huh. fact that he attacked here shows Trump, though, that he has a death spite. Otherwise, he wouldn't attack. Uh, right this turn. So uh, the Void Walker has to be played. Oh, wow, okay, so he's trading everything to play on Battle Rage. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Good. Deny the card draw again from the patron. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know if I like the Flame Imp. Knowing your opponent has a Death Spite, the Void Walker is probably the better play. Does he, maybe, maybe he thought like he can hide the void collar or void the walker and the imp gang boss, so that uh -huh. way he can force some one ones. Yeah, game. and also he can kill off the um, the haunted creeper, which yeah. will give him like three one ones next turn. Yep. So it, it's it's all right for sure. Mm -hmm. He's also thinking uh, next turn he can imp gang boss uh, void walker, and he wants to protect the imp gang boss, so it takes the one and yeah, not yeah. the four. Yeah, That abuse is actually so important uh, coming up next turn. Uh, he's gonna get two green patrons. Um, is he? If he decides to play, I think he. If will he gets play. like a whirlwind or something, he might delay it one turn. I think. Yeah, he could also uh, uh, think that this is just not a very good board to um, to whirlwind. In fact, you might actually. I think the power of the board stays the same. Maybe. Uh, no, 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 it, it just only gets reduces three by one ones. So, yeah, so you don't actually one do ones. much. So you reduce it by one attack. Yeah, you don't actually do much with this death spite attack. 
Well, then why don't you just? Uh, never mind. I'm, I'm pretty sure just playing patron. That's probably bad. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably bad. that would get. <laughs> but I, I guess think... what you could do is also set up the next death fight with the man. I'm pretty sure that uh, unstable goal is to play here, yeah, because you do clear all the one ones coming out. Uh, and you get a battle rage here. Uh, you can also execute the um, in, in, uh, gang boss. So this is a full board clear, basically. Because he's not getting an imp from that either, and everything's gonna die to the death rattle. Yeah, that's pretty reasonable too. Alright, not bad, not bad. So do you want to play the egg here before? I think you might want to play the egg before, because next time you want to win, yeah, it will it's a free it. trigger. So, Doom Guard, okay. Mm. That's quite nice. Yeah. But you can just play a tempo abusive then. Because next turn you almost certainly power roll on Doom Guard. Alright, so for the main. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah it, it's true, it's true. Um, and he's going to do just that. I mean, I kind of I guess this is where the second death spice is really big. Ooh, oh, that's also that really is nice. That's the too. best. Card he could have top deck there. That is so good on curve. Yep. I mean, he doesn't have a lot of cards, but it's not really that needed. Uh, as long as, as, as long as Jorgen Patron and uh, Battle Rage uh, gets a oh. decent cost. I mean, honestly, it's a, it's a whirlwind effect too with the unstable goal, so it's not bad at all. Yeah. Hurts this, to discard an egg, but you gotta do it here. You gotta Doom Guard for some, egg, some face damage. I mean, egg is not that bad to discard considering you already used one abusive and one power whelming so you don't have a lot of more triggers and they don't have brawl in, uh, mm -hmm. in green patrons so it's not that useful of a card but uh it could i mean it could have been worse it could have been better i guess uh and you did use an execute so i think yeah. the time is like to press is is right at this moment yeah this there's, there's a pretty good play here and that's just killing off the nerubian with the death spite and playing unstable uh mm. ghoul and armor smith are you sure you want to do that? Wouldn't you want to ghoul in front of the um, Grim Patron? Are you still going to get a lot of uh, Grim Patrons next turn? Because uh, the Armor Smith um, will be will uh, be damaged by the so Death Rattle from the ghoul. And, and then you whirlwind the Grim Patrons, you get to draw like three cards at least. Uh, mm -hmm. If you don't pick up a like, in rage, you get to draw more. But uh, I definitely think that is the play. Because you, you can't really take much more damage. Uh, you're going to go down to 12 here. Uh, and then you're gonna take five if you don't play that stable guild right now. I mean, you might just armor. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna armor. But then he gets a free trade on the armor smith. But that's fine because oh, 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 that is oh, boom on curve. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for that one. I mean, that, that was that was the card that Trump would like to go to keep this pressure on. Yeah, the only thing he's considering here is whether or not he wants to trade or not. He's he's already seen one execute. Yeah. So, uh, I think making he's... a trade here is not that bad. Yeah, I think he's considering with Grim Patron too, like one of yeah. the ways he can come back is through a bunch of Grim Patrons and War oh, effects. Oh, that would have been horrible if he kept that Armorsmith alive. So yeah. that was good that he kept that off. Um, oh man. Mm. I think people downstairs just saw the Doctor Boom draw. <laughs> yeah, this is really, really, really good because you can kill off the Doom Guard. Uh, yeah, and then you can play not stable ghoul to block I think, the. I think you want to play the ghoul now. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Because you want it to might die. That would suck, but man, what if those boom just create more patrons and then all of a sudden? Uh, I don't anything. know. Again, I think yesterday was an outlier. It's not usually what happens. Yeah, all right. You're probably right. Okay, let's see here. Goodbye, patrons. Oh. Oh. oh! And that's a battle rage. That is a battle rage. Uh, you were. That's a first, whirlwind though. battle rage. Yeah. You uh, get an extra card. Rage. Yeah, I like it. Actually, you get to armor up if you don't, but uh, you need to. Drop I think cards. you're okay. I mean, you can if always you draw an execute. Time. You just win. Yeah, you do. Wow, that that might just turn the game around. So he's gonna draw four cards here, but no, he's Whoa. actually considering. I mean, he will draw like eight Screen. cards next turn, right? Yeah. Or something like that was. Right, but oh well, that helps him get some damage to the face. Oh my god, it could actually. Let's see here. A Can overwhelming. Oh, that's one off. yeah, one off. Wow. Oh, this is awkward. Doom guard? No, you can't. Enough mana. Oh, oh wait. wait. What? No, no, no. That's that's the, so weird. Yeah, you can't leave on here though. <laughs> There's no even if all four daggers. If you roll a four and all daggers rolls, but that's. That is so awkward. Not, not to mention that every imp dies, which is like okay, uh, but then it also creates more grim patrons. 
There's yep. No, let's do it. Uh, so, so let's this, do it. This is, this is kind of uh, silly. I mean, how, how would you describe the situation? Actually, this this could, if he gets really really lucky here and implodes, there's a way of clearing like a lot of patrons because they will spawn more than. Can you implode like for two or something? Right. On. So. If you implode like a, so weird. a okay. three two patron and then it hits four. Okay. Oh, so. God. That is good. Wait, actually, that's good. That's yeah, good. That's what I'm Spreading? talking about. If it keeps so, hitting the other three twos. Yeah, and he's oh that goodness. again. He hits that one again. Then it's actually not as bad. Uh, uh, one of those more, again more. now. Yeah. Oh, oh, wow. That's good. I mean, that uh, could have yeah, been guess, much worse. Yeah, it's yeah, it's fine for sure. All right, so there we go. Rage, he's so. looking for lethal. He's got 12, nope. 15. Mm, nope. Nope. Six. 6 or 17. Nope. Oh, there, 20, that's, that's it. That's it. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Does he have enough mana? Uh, yeah, he does. He can yeah. play War Song, War Song yeah. Cruel Task, Axe. That's lethal. There it is. I think he's just counting real quick. Yeah, you got to make sure in this situation. You don't want to do something stupid like leave your opponent one yeah, and then yeah, lose. Yeah, yeah. But the Cruel Task is five. and then. Wait, wait, wait. Does he have room? Yeah, he does yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. have room for all the... Oh, yeah. my goodness. It worked exactly how... It was, like, perfect. Exactly how it should be. Right? For damage? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So that's that's it. That's a huge win again for Cloud Nine. Yeah, that was a close game, though. Really big stuff. Man, and that, that's pretty devastating for Value Town, because um now it's like they, you know, Cloud Nine takes the lead here. Yeah. And you know they're giving more chances for that mid range paladin to play games, which is like if you can paint pin that as a weak link, yeah, the more I, opportunities you get, the better. I don't even paint that as a weak link. I think it's just like pretty good against most decks. I think it's not exceptional against almost anything. Yeah. But that doesn't really matter. I mean, that's how a lot of decks survive in this and, format. Oh, we forgot. Oh, Trump is also benched. benched. Get over here. Uh oh. <laughs> no zoo. That doesn't really matter. Wow. The yeah. walk of shame. Mm mm. That's what the that's what 2015 has become. Just sitting in the bench in the back of the room. It's okay, Trump. <laughs> Maz is so happy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and apparently he gets the Hearthstone plushie pillow as his buddy. Oh, he's crossing things out. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I, just... I think uh, the notebook's not been going according to plan for Trump mm, so not... far. You know, it, it feels like uh, he's doing a lot of planning. The, he did win that Paladin game. But uh, it just it's not working out for him. Yeah, well, there's still uh, quite a bit left. That Paladin game was pretty uh, spectacular, though. Yeah, yeah. It's we been, need more games like that. It's been pretty nuts. Some of the stuff that's happened, but uh, in the end, Cloud Nine is uh, up four three. Only has to win two more games. The Priest here feels like a pretty strong pick as well. Yeah, and I that mean, would set up a Strife Crow versus the World. Both of uh, the priest and the mid range is pretty favored against uh, the Sioux. Uh, mm -hmm. So it wasn't like a really huge yeah, uh, thing to get benched here mm -hmm. for uh, Value Town. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe it was a big thing for them to win ultimately. Mm -hmm. Like it's not the fact that they got benched, yeah. but it's like, I think the patron was expected yeah. to win one game though. So everyone pretty much thought that that would happen. Wait, Trump's upstairs again? No. Oh wait, what? Pre-recorded. Wait, are there actually two Trumps in this house? That would make it four Trumps. That would, are there actually four Trumps? <laughs> What's face? Uh, I think maybe he went back upstairs quickly to discuss strategy. This is an outrage. Well, what's the purpose of benching if he can't actually stay on the bench? Exactly. Like, the bench should yeah. have some... The bench is cold. It needs to stay warm. Like, Trump, it, get your butt you, down you, Your there. team should at least have to go to you, right? Yeah. Yeah. At the very least, and discuss your strategy in open air. That's the punishment. Who's the team captain? Trump. Trump. He's got the notebook. It's his notebook. Yeah. yeah. It's He's also written stuff Value in Value Town. Yeah. yeah. Value Town. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't even know what kind of names if uh, Kibler would make it. Just something about his dog Shiro, and then oh, dog, would, dog would do something about dogs. So, well, fortunately, Trump was the captain, so that's mm -hmm. good. <laughs> Actually, yeah, the other two members would have picked something related to, to dogs. Okay, yeah. Nice. yeah. Instead, Trump uh, he, he's benched, and I guess apparently that means nothing. He just goes upstairs, right? And talks. Yeah, I guess so. I guess the bench is actually more convenient because it's like nice and cool down there, and just people hanging. Is out. it? And you guess you can get some food. Like easy proxy. Dog got dog food yesterday. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, that's true, but he didn't eat it. That's no, true. As far as I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so wow. after he got benched, uh, Moz gave him a little. Like, a dog food. Oh, yeah. God. Kibbles. 
Uh, missed that. All right. Well, uh, Dog will have to play. Um, has he even played at all? Yeah, he played and lost to Druid today yeah. once. Yeah, it was which is Druid Mirror, I believe, against Strife. Not, not too much of a surprise. That deck has been drawing so poorly. I want to see the Druid again. Well, you might see plenty of it. Warrior versus Paladin. The yeah. matchup they wanted. Yep, it's a pretty good one. But let's see if Strife goes onto something. He was talking, I believe it was with Raynad, and they were both like talking about how they think mid range Paladin is pretty decent against Patron nowadays if you account for it, especially considering how dominant it is. So you can expect it very regularly. I mean, they wouldn't come to this format thinking like, oh yeah, like uh, this, you know, no one will play Patron. That you know people will bring Patron because the high likelihood of the lineups includes. Yeah, Str Strifecore has been playing it every single week, and Patron, I mean, He's on, on ladder, season. patron is less frequent these days, but in the tournament scene, yeah, patron is strange. just as frequent. Yeah. So I mean, it's been working out for them, and I mean, I don't see a reason to stop now. I think the key is just the same thing with any deck against patron. Um, like the same reason as mid range hunter could be good against patron if it curves out very strongly and makes powerful tempo plays onto the board. Uh, like for example, patron actually, like you you kind of talk about how patron can't deal with other patrons. It's the mm -hmm. same concept if you get for land a quartermaster, that's pretty decent. It's like there's just too many minions that you have to deal with and there's too much damage you take. Apples will be placed on heads. That's a pretty good start for um, Juggler, Juggler. Strike Pro, yeah. Uh, there's no Fire War X, so that's a big deal. He's gonna go ahead and coin out the... Actually, okay, yeah, so he has to make safer. a read here. I, I don't know if he uh, looked at the amount of cards that Strike Pro Mulligan, um, I mean the Dog Mulligan. So if you get, can make the read that he probably does not have the Fire War X, he will go for the Knife Juggler. Because mm -hmm. uh, that can actually trade um, with a Juggle hit on the Armor Smith. And it also trades for Knife Juggle, uh, I mean uh, Acolytes afterwards as well. Right. Well, you can trade into the Acolyte regardless if you play the Minibot or not. He doesn't have to choose between that. Uh, the Shield Minibot just, mm. just feels better. Yeah, it's, it's worse against Armorsmith, but it's better mm. if he has the War Axe in the sand. Uh, so knowing exactly what they have in their hands, the Night Juggler is better. Well, that's the thing. If you're if you're playing against the matchup you think you're not the favorite in, you'd play a riskier play, right? Uh-huh, yeah. So yeah. then he'd go for the Night Juggler, but he... But the confidence... Goes. Overconfidence is Insidious oh. Killer, though. So. Yeah. So he thinks he's actually favored. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but he's pretty confident in the matchup. I mean, it's one of those things where... Again, he, he was like discussing it for several minutes that he, he thinks that it's even favored against it, not even just even. Mm -hmm. And if he can continue curving out decently, then I mean, who's to say he's wrong? Yeah. All right. Juggler comes down. He can handle the acolyte now if he wants. So that's two damage, right? Effectively, that is missed. Three, because you do that. right? Two damage right. is missed. So we'll see if that two damage oh, actually, is actually, so actually more because if um, if he would have coined up the first knife juggler, he would have seen that he didn't have knives and he would have played another juggler. yeah second knife juggler as well. And that's so that's an extra damage there, and then you play the mini boss. It's three. That, that's, yeah. that's that's five damage. It's a lot of damage actually. It's yeah. Actually, five mm -hmm. damage if you if you think of, assuming it goes to the face every time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If he plays minions, then uh, it's different. Yeah, he's not gonna go ahead and play the knife juggler. He knows he will only get one card from it. Um, and he, the the one health on the knife juggler is actually quite useful if he has another knife juggler right, that he has. Right. So he could have just uh, played Death Spite here and gotten rid of the other uh, other knife juggler and the shield. That's so the, insane. Like if yeah. you think about if you took that line and of course we have the information. Yeah, like, yeah. He'd be at eighteen right now. Yeah, exactly. It's like that's crazy yeah. to think how much difference that is, considering that he has like the shredder here and true silver. Yeah, it really is huge. The shredder is really good here. Like really good. It's definitely one of the best cards against Warrior because they're so inefficient at removing the Shredder's death battle effect. Mm -hmm. And it's just so punishing to take that damage from weapons. <clears throat> yeah. Striker really has a dream start here. Uh, I'm not sure if he's running Zombie Chalice in this deck. I think so. I believe he, he is. is. Okay. In the past he has. I don't think we've seen it in this tournament though. Yeah, because this curve is actually pretty hard to get. Uh... It doesn't happen every game. No. And Dog's in, already in a big pressure situation. Yeah. And this is exactly what Strifo was going for, so I think, what's the best in this I think game? Dog is really kind of fed up with this. Like, every <laughs> single time he plays, yeah. he just gets trash, and, and his opponents just curve out perfectly. Like, so, every time in this tournament. He really needs to clear here. Uh, he can't really play the Green Patron, I think. You don't think so? You can, can't go for the Green Yeah, because if you do that, 
if you do the green patron in rage here, you can't kill off the knife juggler or you can't kill off the shredder. Uh, when we kill off the shredder and get better juggles on the, no, I guess you're right. You take too much damage. Yeah, I, I wonder if he's gonna go ahead and like kill the shredder here or not because you get that juggle which gives you an extra patron if you're lucky. Uh, but he's he's not gonna do that. He's just gonna play it safe here. Uh, but this is. Ooh. So he can clear uh, everything but one patron here. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem is if whatever comes after the shredder is less than three damage, it then, starts uh, then growing it can again. Snowball, yeah, exactly. Uh, not only get, does he get another patron, but he gets uh, battle rage potential. Hmm. So let's see here. He's debating whether or not he can raise him right Whoa. here. Uh, oh, you think that's what he's doing? He's, he can do 10 damage to face this turn, and then he can do 6 more damage next turn. So that would be a lethal with uh, just armoring up uh, for the warrior. Uh, but if he has armor smith... Ooh. It's... No, it's okay, because he can still use his right? Oh, I see. Yeah. I'm not sure though. Wouldn't it have been better? He could do 10 damage to face. He could put him at 4. Mm -hmm. uh, right. The warrior at 4. We would have killed him actually for the juggler first, right? He's afraid of... He would have uh... just won there. Yeah, 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 he would have. <laughs> But he could have put him to four, and the next turn, if he armored up, he would have been at six. He right. could have just attacked again and mm -hmm. consecrated and won. Assuming so, any, no minions even survive. Right? Yeah. Uh, the problem with that is uh, potential armor smith and shield block. Uh, That's true. So he didn't want to take that risk, but maybe it was the correct play. Just hoping, because uh, you're unfavored, in my opinion. But Strike Girl doesn't feel like he is, apparently. He's making a lot of safe yeah, uh, like defensive I'll, plays. I'll... Yeah. yeah, because he has Dr. Boom in his hand too, and he, maybe that's like enough pressure. Oh, wait, what? He was he setting up for a quartermaster next turn. It's, it's because of Dr. Boom. it's the same concept. You can't deal with that many patrons, assuming your opponent doesn't have a whirlwind effect. Oh, he feels like he doesn't kill off the. I don't know, that's kind of weird that's, though. There's two battle rage effects. Oh! Yeah, that is so risky. You have not seen a single battle rage yet. Oh. And uh, he's giving that Emperor more. Emperor more Okay, and I guess maybe his thought is that if he spends a whirlwind, he kills his own emperor anyway. Him. But the thing is that he doesn't need to kill because there is no way for him to get lethal, even with a quarter monster. He knows mm -hmm. that. Well, I kind of like the uh, acolyte armorsmith whirlwind axe play. It's good. Uh, Second battle. Rate I think is he's gonna. I think he. I mean, he, he, he knows. Later, though. He knows that he won't lose uh, to anything uh, that the paladin yeah. has. So he's just gonna go ahead and draw more cards. He's not gonna kill off his own, even at the at the risk of uh, him uh, quarter mastering here. He can still just win the game next turn with a uh, frothing whirlwind, uh, like potential combos here. If he goes face with the emperor, yeah, he does. So, oh, he does decide to whirlwind anyway. Yeah, I think he, I think, I think he's he got to. enough ability to go push damage face. Yeah, he has the war axe. He can deal six damage yeah. over the course of two turns. Uh, but it would have had such a yeah, awesome it would have turn really if everything got reduced. Thing. Oh, that's again. a bad card. Yeah, there's so much out. But he's playing boom this turn anyway. So I think Shrefko set up like two alter like two paths that could have happened. Either he quartermastered or he played Doctor Boom. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure you attack um, the, Acoly the, the Acolyte as well. Really? Yeah, because then the boom bots uh, won't attack a one-one. I feel like yeah, but he might just play card. anything else. I don't think that really matters too much. Oh, that's a pretty good card. Yeah. Is that lethal? I think that might be. You have the no, frothing and the charge. No, lethal? no, no. no. Uh, he doesn't have word of it anymore. That's the problem. Yeah. But he has the ghoul. The ghoul? Yeah, but I don't. Wait, one, two, three, four. No, I don't. I mean, he two, played it so fast. I doubt he missed lethal, right? Did he miss? Seven, nine. I find it very that's a hard. A lot of damage. Well, actually, that was probably he had a weapon as well. Yeah. No. no, no, no. He only he had um let's see he had fifteen damage I think. but the boom bots if they hit creatures oh you're right the boom bots yeah. has to not kill the frothing yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and the and the frothing would be at three hp mm -hmm. but it can but, it can absolutely the, I, kill the ghoul because the ghoul you want to die anyway yeah yeah you're right but I think he's thinking like paladin can't burst me as much mm -hmm. so like it's better to take the safe route mm -hmm. so I can deal with these boom bots first and now he has two frothing berserkers so yeah it's a high chance of him being able to kill. I go with certain. <laughs> yeah, this is. Oh, he decides to. Okay. It's looking really bad for Strike Crew. Yeah. Yeah, those boom bots not really working out right now. Wow, dog actually pulls us back. 
Well, I mean, it's the idea that the, the Pound had a window, and I think Force and you were touching upon mm-hmm. it. You if know, he had played the Night Triangle on one, he would have just won the game. Yeah, because he would have had room to push for the lethal. Well, when he would have pushed for lethal, instead he would have just won. Because he would have, uh, with Forsen's right. face play, he would have gone to four. Mm-hmm. But we agreed that if he played Knife Dragon instead of Shield of Minibus, he would have had five extra damage it in the is, opener. It is a very big difference. Yeah. It's hard to say, like, in hindsight, though. Like, uh, he could have had a War Axe, and uh, that would have been really bad. Right, uh, if he and played then he would have lost that damage. Yeah. All right, well, uh, that has to be Pitchers it. Pitchers at 25, no big deal. Yeah. And uh, his opponent most likely is dead. Yeah, this is lethal for sure. This is making sure. He has to... Uh... Mm, the mana's a little clunky, though. <coughs> Two, three, seven, and then... Uh, whirlwind Effect uh, gives you plus One, two, eight. Three, four. So, two, eight, ten, eleven, fourteen. I count fourteen damage. No, you trade the armor smith into a minion. Oh, you're right. Yeah. So it's fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Because uh, the armor smith. Right. Like, uh, I'm, I'm getting his right. Let me recount that. The following berserkers too. Then you gain yeah. plus six, but you get two from the. Yeah, you, you need to trade the armor smith into so, a minion. Uh, yeah, that, you're right. that way you get two damage. And extra. that'd be fi- that'd be fifteen. It's just like really making sure here because it's exactly oh. lethal. Wait. And we can't. Oh, okay, one more time. Five Berserkers, two. The world effects <laughs> is six, plus the two from the bump, so that's ten. Plus the two from the armor smith, plus the fire works, it's fifteen. Yeah. Okay. So he, he's, just, he's just going for the guaranteed win, like. A <laughs> BM. Yeah. The ultimate BM from Dog. I mean, if this is. My, I mean, if he gets an equality. <laughs> oh, you're right. Equality consecration. Yeah. It, Oh, did it tie? No. no. No, no, he's got it. He's got it. Okay, okay. Even if he misses one damage, it's pretty consequential. Okay, got it. Yeah. Right. He's at 30. The yeah. equality, though, you're right. Oh, <laughs> Well, okay, there's Punish. still there's still the second board song commander in the deck, right? Yeah. Well, that might be the last card. We've yeah, seen that. that's true. We've and seen games where hits, it's like, well, yeah. all you need is Alastraza, card number three. And, and you know, Striker hits like Tyrion next card, right? Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> horrible. Whoa. There's nothing really to evaluate on this one. You just have to play that and hero power up. But it's a long road back. His opponent meant uh, rubber banded to 30 health, practically. Well, he's uh, higher than that now. Yeah. What is that? 34. 34. So, you know, send your best men strife, girl, because you're going to need it. Well, he yeah. sent Uther. That's a good guy. He needs to pick up a lay on hands here. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right. Well, uh, I don't know if that is lethal, is it? Yeah, it's double throwing. It's uh, Two... lethal for sure. No, it's not. It has to be. Yeah, it's not. He can't. He also, can't he, kill off the ghoul. Yeah, he can't. The ghoul oh, can't kill off the ghoul. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Die. So it just wow. becomes eight damage. But now, if Strife Crow right. plays anything, he loses. So yeah. it's pretty hard to lose he this. Can't actually kill Unless off the ghoul. Right. Is it Tyrion? Mm-hmm. Oh no, he has execute for zero, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, so even if it's Tyrion, uh, what, what about uh, Sludge Belcher? Yeah, Sludge Belcher is really good. He has an execute though. Uh, what is he doing? Why is he playing it now? Wait, what? Does he think he has, wait, does he actually have lethal? No, he's just gonna go face with everything. What, uh, I think what if he what if he pumps up one of the the minions with the frothing attack? This too? this is a if he doesn't kill anything here, it's a punish though with the uh, consecration. Second consecration. Yeah. Wait, what? He's gonna go ahead and execute that. He, he's starting to execute his own go. Wait, like, execute. Artosis, please. <laughs> oh, oh, he's going so that way a weapon hit is lethal. Wait, wait, wait. Hello. Hold on, what just happened? I don't know. Wait, is this a punish? No? Oh, uh, Blue Guild Warrior! Oh, wait, wait, wait. Blue uh, Guild Warrior. He, uh, he had, yeah, the Blue Guild Warrior or the, uh, what's it called? The older Murkai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are the ways he can yeah. kill these falling berserkers. Yeah. And then it's down to the weapon draw for Dog. Dog would have to draw f- Second Fire War Act or something to kill him. Okay, let's see. Okay. So there's two out of like eight. eight Frock more luck, so 10 or something? Yeah, yeah, I think it's 8 or 9. Yeah, so. I did a video on it, but I forgot. So it's a 25% chance, but that's his only way to, to survive. Yes. Right now, here we go. It's like 20%, 25%. Oh. Oh, uh, here we go. Oh! No! He goes! <laughs> he goes! 
for the Murloc. He gets the old Merc Eye, and everyone is going crazy. Wow. And Dark has lost all of his charging potential. Every single one. He and needs to top deck a weapon now. The, the Murloc Knight still has to be spawning board control. This punish is laughing. This punish. So hard. And what makes it crazy is Dog had that lethal. But here's the thing, he can also just win off that yeah. weapon draw, just like he said. Oh, shield block, shield block, shield block's pretty, I mean, just another weapon. No, Slam. spam is That is good, that is good. Yeah, and he can execute. execute. For the weapon? No. no. But that's a board clear. It can't, it can't be countered right now, actually. No, it cannot. He has a one damage weapon. Yeah. But then you just uh, wait for the Tyrion off the top, or the Lay on Hands. Bro. The yeah. Lay on Hands or the Tyrion puts it's him so most certainly gonna go for this away. And... Well, he's he's got cards. he's got several weapons, right? He's only he also has a heal, right? The yeah. Leon hands. Yeah, Leon hands and Tyrion are the no, two. No, no, no. And heal bot, heal bot as well. No, I mean, I mean, dog, dog has a lot. He only has seven cards. He has a lot of weapons. Slush Belcher too. Oh yeah, he has. Uh... Oh man, that's crazy. Cause now Inner Rage is lethal. Now Inner Rage is lethal. Second cool task master. Second cool task master weapon. There's like three or four out of seven draws here that lethals for dog. Slam. This is too much of a tease. End it, dog. <laughs> Oh god. Stop this I madness! I want Strifegro to win, what? Oh what my you, god. What are you doing? Just Stryker's... end it! What are you waiting for? <laughs> Do it! Make it yes, you can! No, no. Oh god. This Last is... turn, you said next turn! <laughs> oh, oh no! The Sludge Belcher at 1 HP! <laughs> It's, it's favored. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's favored, guys. You just uh, see so you're wrong, course, and you were just wrong. No, 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 no. This, <laughs> is... this is crazy. So Strife Crow, would you, he, he should kill these like one of the minions, right? Kill the gnomish inventor, yeah. so that way it has a higher wait, chance wait. of protecting it. Does it need to kill? That yeah. Minion? So you don't now, lose the weapon. Steals the cool. You lose the weapon if you don't kill that. He, he, so yeah, I guess over the course of two turns, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, Dog is running out of cards. He cycles so much. I think he's down to like four, three cards now. Yeah, he's down so to like three cards. He might literally draw like what he should have used the previous turn to win, like weapon or something. Is coming cool. Out. That is not bad. Uh, really, that looks bad. I mean, I mean, it kills uh, <laughs> Silvanus and the one ones. Um, so what do you need here to win? Um, you need to get past the Sludge Belcher, and you need a weapon so you can hit twice over. Yeah. So the, the weapon needs to kill the slime and then hit the face. So if you do that, you, hmm. you Whirlwind and then the the Ghoul challenge. No, I think you Whirlwind next turn. You're at 44. <laughs> you Whirlwind next turn. Okay. No, but the thing is the Ghoul challenges the Sludge Belcher. Oh. Yeah. So then you can hit, use the weapon to hit I twice see. over. And I then Strifeco needs to draw his, yeah, his, yeah. his Tyrion, his Lay on Hands, or his Antique Heal Bot. That's three that, that's potential draws. No, I don't think so. No, that's, oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> that's so that way he big. can't get past the taunt. Use it now, yeah. He might as well hit face with that weapon. So Dark needs to draw. Does yeah. so Dark have another execute? Because that's like another thing he needs to draw now too. Uh, he's down to his last three cards. I, don't think, I think he's played one of them is a weapon. I think two of them are weapons. One of them's an inner rage, right? One, one of them's an inner rage. rage. And so and then the, what's the last remaining card? Is it an execute? No, I think he has two weapons left. He has two weapons? Did he play Fire War X this game? I don't think so. Some some people cut one Fire War X from their deck. Oh, you're right. Uh, it could be one so, Fire War X. Yeah. No, but if you have Shield Block, which he does, they <laughs> come back, right? Where are Strife Crow's draws? I mean, here? they only have one Fire War X in the deck. No, uh, a lot of the patients have two. To yeah, yeah, but, but some of them cut him. I don't know if this is which uh, version I feel, this I feel is. the ones with Shield Blocks tend to put them in. Okay. So I, I don't actually that's why know. I'm a bit optimistic. I don't know that a lot of I people. I think in ATLC, it. every single patron that's missed lethal has lost the game. Yeah, that's pretty I, funny. I, I'm not sure about that stat, but it's certainly exciting. All it's the ones that I've cast, he, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. he is in huge trouble here because he has three cards remaining, and the weapon that he could draw is not even enough to get past the taunt for him to kill. He need to have two weapons, and then Trefko has to miss on his heels, because which he has so far. Yeah, I mean, and now just hits nothing, right? Yeah. Yeah, and what are you gonna silence? Is this the one one for more damage? But wait, did Dog play both of his acolytes? Uh, but if, even if he didn't, wouldn't you want to not no. silence it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so close to fatigue, so yeah. Second last card. Oh, it's an acolyte. oh god. <laughs> and then, so the last card is a weapon, then, right? He can't win. Then he can't win. Unless it's. Uh, oh no, he can. That's. Oh, okay. he can. If he can, if it's death because he can clear with all the one ones after he attacks, and then the acolyte hits for the one. But the, the antique heal bot off the top. Oh, wow. That's gonna seal that's it. it. Yeah, that's, 
that's there's yeah. no way for dog to win and he realized i mean i don't think he wants to see the last card does, does he know that he missed lethal uh, no i don't think she no, did. He, no. He, even if he didn't miss lethal he should have just waited with the frothings i think that's just yeah that was just last card of, is despite but so it was kind of he had the chance right? like he had double frothing ghoul the only way you the only way you lose is if you do the combo and then get cleared Right? Yeah. So that was that was a bit hasty. He did consecrate, but Zerkin consecrate didn't actually kill off the throwing. He needed to get that Murloc though. That was like right. that, you can't play around getting Murkai like from the. Yeah, it happens every time. If he didn't draw the antique heal bot, he had a two turn lethal there. Mm -hmm. How? He, how? Because no. he would he would hit the, the, the he the had hit the sludge voucher yeah. and then he hit the sludge. Yeah. And then it clear the board, and then the acolyte would challenge for a one hit damage yeah. kill. Because <laughs> he's at one uh, HP. Assuming he didn't draw, he had, he, he had some other outs though. Except yeah, he drew nothing. Yeah, I'm yeah. saying, but like from that point on, the heal right. was. He had like, Tyrion you know, and Leon Hans every day. That could and second Belcher maybe. Probably like, a second Belcher. Yeah, mm. probably. Uh, but either way, wow. it was, uh, that was pretty insane. Unfortunate. But it could have easily been like you know maybe he drew something else like a. a, a it, Monster for battle. It, it could easily be no, any other Murloc right? as well. Did he? Uh, Did he? It could be a good point. But I'm just saying the point is know. there were draws yeah. that he could have whiffed on. So there was like a chance all the way to the final. The last thing though is like you said, the 30th card that sometimes you need, the death by should have came way earlier. Yeah, yeah. And it just yeah. didn't show up at all. Uh, like if the death by showed up before the blessing of yeah. things, different story, right? I really just think like um I think when there's like a really complicated lethal situation, especially in like a tournament format, it's not a in my book, in my mind, it's not a big deal if you miss it. But I'm just I'm just putting it back on that double frothing charger ghoul hand, mm -hmm. yeah. where all you need to do is wait for a minion to be played with three attack, and yeah. you can't lose. Yeah, yeah. By the way, we should all say hi to Disguise Toast video because uh, I think this is going to go into the Mist Lethals compilation. Oh, hi, YouTube. Featuring patron number three. Yeah. yeah. So. All right. Well, uh, hopefully, Dog doesn't take it too hard because he's going to have to win with two decks for uh, Value oh, Town man. to make it into the uh, into the final. One. I'd be super tilted. I'd be pretty tilted too. That. Yeah, I would be. And Trump is still benched. So Dog has to play. Yeah, he has to play. And um, I mean, this this is a lot of pressure for Colanto as well, being the last last one to play for your team. Yeah, but look uh, at your deck. Your deck counters like all three of them almost, right? Uh, I wouldn't uh, say Druid's okay. I think the Druid matchup is like pretty good, right? Slightly favored for yeah. uh, the uh, the Warlock, like you said, is really tough, and then the. Uh, the patron's probably pretty good too, but it's not like it's not like that great. Like let's say fifty, right? Let's say fifty on the warrior. Let's say fifty on the druid. And then the warlock is less than fifty. Yeah, I think the patron is a bit more the favorite though. Um, I think it's uh, fifty-five, sixty percent actually versus mm -hmm. dragon priest. Okay, but uh, it's certainly going to be close. I mean, Kalento is a really good player, so that gives him an edge. But and dog might be a bit tilted after that series. A bit. I don't it's know. Possible. Yeah. Rumors are. I don't know, he is kind of of an emotional player. Um, yeah, he, he, he definitely is. Yeah, so I don't know if that's going to get him. Uh, he's had some bad luck with uh, Druid as well. As Extremely. Seen. Yeah, mm -hmm. so um, we'll see if he can pull back in like, to a good mindset or not. But definitely favored. Uh, Kanan is definitely favored to win at this point. Oh, but, absolutely. Uh, Oh yeah. man, that game was great. Shrek was actually just uh, remembering the Murloc Knight coming through clutch. The old yeah. Murloc guy to deny the Frothing yeah. Berserker. It was only that or the, the Boogie. Yeah. yeah, there's no other Murloc that would have helped There's no there. Murloc with Taunt. Right? No. Not yet, but when there will be, there will Murloc be. Knight is going to be crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. Who says TGD cards aren't fun? <laughs> All right. Kalento versus... Well, Dog is Dog. smiling. I think it's. I think this is just uh, showtime. Uh, it is. Yeah. Um. This is um. This is game. This is game for ninety k guaranteed for so, cloud nine. So let's see here. Versus the, potentially zero. The results doesn't really matter. Like the scoring, right? No. Like, it doesn't no. matter at all. So you okay. just play whatever you. So feel before like. you would play your strongest deck first. Uh, mm -hmm. Try to get as many wins. Yeah. No. It now it doesn't matter. Probably. Yeah. Just, play whatever you would feel more comfortable with. I guess. Yeah. Uh. In the previous day, you can make an argument that you shouldn't play a deck you haven't revealed yet mm -hmm. because then you could hide it. I think Temple exactly. actually. But did everyone this. knows all the deck lists by now, I believe. Yeah, the only thing that we don't know is Temple Storm's Mage. Oh yeah, right. I was asking Hype about that. He was like, "It's a top secret mage." Yeah, I don't so. It's a top secret, secret freeze mage. Secret. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mage hasn't made many appearances, so so we'll this is. See it. A pretty bad start. Uh, yeah, we're from, the one in uh, two No one or two drop. Uh, well, he's no used to this, right? 
This yeah. is Kanto's Cont third try with this deck. Oh yeah, yeah this is that's but, a good pickup for sure. Uh, having that coin in this matchup is super huge. Like being able to coin out um, the Death Spite to contest uh, Dark Cultists is yeah. like really really good. Uh, yeah. And that's what he's thinking about right now, but he has to play it. I mean, you, you need to take the risk here. Coin that out. Yeah, you oh, gotta man. go for it. And the thing is that uh, now the Twilight Guardian will die as well, because he has 6 damage, uh, including with, including the Armorsmith damage. It does kill the Armorsmith as well in the process, so you'd probably yeah. just play it anyway. Yeah. Ooh, now we have... Uh, hmm. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it gets challenged by the board, but yeah. I think you just gotta follow that curve. What about just Northshire Power Shield there? Uh, to draw the Death Spider attack? Yeah, I don't think you need to uh, kill off the Northshire uh, if he does that. Mm. You can just like play the uh, Acolyte and wait mm -hmm. for more cards. Oh, you can even slam that to keep it alive. Okay. I kind of like the, I like the Acolyte, Acolyte just more. Like, because, you don't need armor in this. Yeah, and also you want to play the Acolyte before turn 6, because okay. then they have Cabal. So you want to use it early as well, Maybe he's just thinking of executing here. Oh, that might be the case, but... He's I mean, up. he doesn't have something to use a whirlwind effect with outside the Acolyte. Yeah. And like he doesn't have Grim Patron, for example. So yeah, I can't, I, I'm pretty sure the Acolyte was my favorite play there. Uh, well, the board state would have ended the same, cool. except you'd have two more cards. Yeah. All right, that's it. That's it. Yeah, I wonder if he was potentially fishing for anything, or he wanted to be more mana efficient. That could be also the case. Like, if you got Cool Taskmaster, for example, maybe he could have slammed into something, and then Cool Task is Acolyte next to him. Yeah. Here, yeah. Mercury Colento here, you just play on curve, I'm pretty sure. You gotta drop it as your Drake. Yeah. yeah. You have a Cabal next turn. Uh, oh, nope. He wants to play. Clento's okay. ways are not our ways. I mean, this is fine as well, because it, this is better against another weapon, uh, for sure. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but can you really play around okay. your opponent having constant weapons? I don't know. Yeah. But I guess I, that's true. I mean, as a priest here, you have to be as aggressive as possible. You have to do as much face damage as possible. Yeah. And you, you haven't been doing that for five turns. So. Yeah, I yeah. like that it's more secure against Death Spike. I like that it also helps set up a mid-range minion to be really beefy. So that way, like Blackwing Corruptor, and you can trade a Darkwing or Dark Cultist if it dies to mm -hmm. be like a five seven. So like, you can't really deal with that. So anymore. the problem now with playing the Acolyte is that it will get the Cabal next turn. Uh, oh, he's gonna enrage it immediately. Okay, that's that's a pretty good play. He's got Fire War Axe to back it up too. Yeah. All right. That's a good draw. It's pretty good uh, to reduce Emperor. Cost. Yeah. So he's gonna go ahead and kill off the Norshay here. Go face. Dark Cultist is hard to remove, but it's not really that threatening. Yeah. But this is really this is a really good turn now, coming back. Uh he's gonna build the Cabal and kill off the Oh, is he thinking about playing on Cabal by trading here? That'd be pretty smart. Yeah, but you can't you can't play it around it forever, so it yeah. doesn't really matter. Uh, but he might force his opponent into a tempo play by doing that. Right? Like I think he's thinking of interaging the acolyte again actually. That's not a bad play, I guess. But he, since he picked up the repatron, I guess he needs to save one for that. Uh, I think this is better than the Cabal, just because, um, well, it's nice to have armor, but you won't get much armor. Like, the Amerson will die immediately. I think uh, it's also before this, that spite, like, this Blackwing Corruptor still goes uncontested mm -hmm. in terms of what's on board. And if he plays Emperor, he actually trades into it directly very easily, and then plays something else. Like, the Blackman Corruptor can just crash into the next threat, most likely. Yeah. And that's so, really big, too. Because, like, Emperor is, is, like, it becomes so much of a threat if you can't even immediately remove it on board. You'd spend some of your mana doing something else. So... He could board clear mm -hmm. here if he wanted to. Uh, I think he's going to uh, play the Emperor. I think he's going to play Emperor and use Inner Rage. And use Inner Rage on uh, the 5-4. Five, 5-4. Four, five, yeah. four. I mean, you can't... You can't really. How good is the hand to mm. use Emperor on? Isn't it's your... double patron and it's uncontested. That's the other part. That is true. At least from what you see. And we, we know that there is a way to deal with the second Blackwing Corruptor, but even if he draws out Shadow Word Death, you anticipate him to only have four more mana to spend because he has seven. That would cost three. Well, Dog's going to go with a slightly risky play here, I think. Yep. I think. I think mean, most players would do this though. Oh, he just 
just doesn't use the inner rage. Mm. Wow. So he wants to use the inner rage on green patrons to be able to trade into <laughs> stuff. Mm. The thing is, like against some decks, what you can do is just pop a bunch of whirlwind effects on a grim patron and hope nothing happens to them. That's true. But you can't really expect that to be the case against this priest deck because uh, you already know Kalento has light bomb. You know Kalento has holy nova with spell damage effects. Mm -hmm. I think also the fact that I, it doesn't mind the 5-4 trading into the Emperor because uh, there's two Shadow Deaths in the, in the deck and uh, if you trade the 5-4 they will become useless the whole game, oh. right? Uh, Shrinkmeister allows him to keep the Blackwing Croaker alive. Yeah, that's probably the play that's here. really nice. So that, because again, he has be to more aggressive be, too. be super aggressive. But the thing is, he could have like, um, he could have stolen uh, like a Green Patron. <laughs> Next turn with the Cabal, if, if that's happened, you that's know? That's right. And it also gets charred, right? Yeah, so then it does. Make it the effect is still, uh, yeah. The War Song Commander. Exactly, you get some game page. Kalinto does run double Shrinkmeister, though. Okay. That is true. Yeah. That's true. That's true. And double Cabal. Yeah, and you can always just, like, he likes his uh, opponent's cards. steal the War Song mm -hmm. yeah. without the Shrinkmeister. Yeah, I like the preserve the minions approach because your opponent showed that he can't really deal with these threads very easily, and you can put as much pressure as possible. I mean, there was, an, there was a line where you could have uh, used Blackwing Corruptor and then get a really big buff one, like a 5-7 Blackwing with a new Blackwing, but I mm -hmm. think this one's better. Just more power. So, cool Taskmaster on the 5-1, but that means he can't play No Mission Venner. But at least he clears a couple minions, so instead of... He might just be going for, like, a big draw play. Like, he has very cheap patrons. We are getting to that stage in the game where you have a lot of mana crystals to do some crazy combos. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Okay, so there's ways to execute that now. Yeah, that's fine. He's okay with that. He has a second execute. Exactly. But then the second execute, and then you have Yusera drop down. Just kind of feels like, how do you deal with that if you don't have the second execute? Mm -hmm. uh, are we going to see finally the Cabal? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Cabal seems pretty good, even though you don't really want a 2-2 two, two, two creature. Yeah, but the thing is that if you Blackwing Corruptor... Actually, no, you don't want a 2-2 two, two creature. I think you Blackwing Corruptor and Velens. That's just a, the, the, probably the strongest board you and can. And you, you just got executed too, right? Yeah. The th thing about it is, instead of the strongest board, the Blackwing Corruptor and the Veil is chosen, so that way Yasera can be popped down. I mean, the Blackwing Corruptor is really good uh, for clearing patrons. That's true. Really it, can snipe. That. it can snipe uh, things very well. Battle Rage, that's, uh, I don't know, that's a bit awkward. But least, I, um, I think you're doing it anyway, just draw the one card, because you have nothing else to do right now. Yeah. So he's going to get him Battle Rage. Uh, Death Spite, really great card. Uh, he still needs more though, it's not enough yet. He's looking for the War Song. Yeah. He's setting up the Death Spite next turn, and then uh, he's definitely looking for a War Song. Alright, well, I think it's uh, Yasero's time. Yeah. There is no better time. The question is whether or not you trade a two two into that two four to get yeah. rid of it. Uh, I, I I consider doing it as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You're I, not you're not gonna significantly bump up the clock because he's at twenty seven. Yeah, I I think I would even just go all out face at this stage. Oh, he's not even you serious. So he's buffing it. Um, that's reasonable. Is he playing the black and Corruptor though? I uh, would assume. Or no, he's actually gonna go ahead and heal probably. Keep so it for green paint. Yeah. yeah. Keep it for Grim Patron hit, uh, snipe. That's pretty smart. Yeah. Shield block. I don't know if dogs, I don't think dog running the shield slams, right? So the shield block's just for life. Yeah. yeah. This play actually is really, mm. is actually very good. Ooh, we could actually, yeah. Like, I actually really like Clunto's board now that you, like, evaluate it. How do you deal with that? That actually could be a two-turn lethal push on the following turns. I think you have to go face with Death's Bite, and I also think you have to start slowing down the damage from the Priest. You have to do the Inner Rage execute play. But you can still do that the next turn. Actually yeah, you still have a good health pool. You know that the Priest doesn't have burst damage, so next turn he can do World mm. Execute Inner Rage. It's, like, it's gonna be insane. Um, I'm pretty sure you play the Ysera here. If you play the Acid Drake and Blackwing, you could actually die to Warsong Frothing, Whirlwind, and stuff like that. You could always die to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have it's 25 health. Yeah, yeah. That's like another yeah. zero short of yeah. what's possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is something to consider if you have too many minions. Yeah. Because he did also play Emperor, right? So you have he to did. account for what he could do. And mm -hmm. if he's really in tune, he's like, okay, he has four cards. If he has two Frothings, an unstable. Yeah, he's going to put one and he, he has lethal yeah. next turn anyway. Um, 
with the black ring. This is 19 damage, right? It's frothing, but no. that's not really anything. Yeah. On the other hand, uh, Kalento doesn't have the Holy Nova, doesn't nope. have the Light Bomb. Exactly. So you didn't need it. This is going to be a Grim Patron turn. I think it might be Grim Patron, Grim Patron, uh, either armor up or. No, you want to save the ghoul for your frothing, right? Well, you still have. I yeah, think I think you want to do Grim easy. Patron, Grim Patron, Inner Rage on your Grim Patron, attack face, execute armor up. Okay, do you want that's to use six patrons? Ring? No. Yeah, no. that's pretty. That's, that's pretty. You really want to use Whirlwind for one more patron while injuring uh, the other ones? Um, no. I mean, if you if you use the Whirlwind, you only have to use one Grim Patron. Yeah, but isn't your win condition the frothing at this stage anyway? Yeah. Assuming. Uh, I mean, Unstable Ghoul and Whirlwind, you can use whatever is more mana efficient here. I believe it will be the, the goal. Uh, are you going to put the Unstable Ghoul to block it as well? Uh, that, that's that's a problem because he can Cabal that. Yeah. So I don't think you played defensively. Uh -oh. You Did he end up going for it? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Did he play it? Uh... Uh, he only shows four mana right now. He may have oh. stopped. Yeah, okay, okay, that's good. Stop. That's good. So that's eight. 11. Is he's, one damage? He's off? one damage off lethal. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, I think Dog was wait, accounting wait, for it. He can draw. Can he draw into it? Uh, three mana to play North Shade and Heal. Uh, two is there any for two though. mana? Holy I don't think so. No, I don't think he's running Holy Smite. No. No. He does run Vulgen. Yeah. No, I don't think there's anything you could do. Uh, I think Kalento's play is just to clear and set up lethal yeah. again. Clear is definitely good play here. Well, it comes down to potentially a dog last and turn here. He needs to draw the the war song, right? Yes. You need to heal your uh, four one here uh, to play around whirlwind effects. Still, there are, you still no, know that there's two whirlwinds. All right, so patron, patron double whirlwind. Let's and, do it. And the unstable ghoul. Do you unstable ghoul? No. I think you you need some trigger for your frothing when you get your uh, yeah. war song. And as long as it doesn't have a charge, you can't really proc your unstable ghouls, and then we we'll just get. So why don't you whirlwind once and then? Oh, I guess because of the heal. So. Yeah. Mm. I like the double whirlwind. Yeah, the problem with playing a stable ghoul is also the fact that they could heal the minions out of range. Yeah. So, it won't even die. But is that your priority here? Let's it could see. be also just Patient Flood, that could be the strategy as opposed to mm -hmm. just killing the minions through spells. Well, you would over Flood with the Ghoul, so I don't know. Like, oh, he you whirlwind once in Ghoul instead, but I don't know if that changes. You much. only get one more Patron, actually, I think, if you Ghoul here. Also, when... Cabal Shadow. Wait, wait, what? Why will... Okay, so... Oh, he's going all in. I'm not sure why he played the Ghoul first. Does it matter? So he has no the same amount of he has four patrons I now. Mean, actually, uh, uh, oh, nine. Right. Hello, Holy Nova. Uh, yeah. That's, oh, that's not lethal. Is no, it? it's not. No, no, it's not. It's uh, three off. Yeah, he's got eleven damage as bonus at fourteen. Yeah. Um. Is it worth cabaling the one the unstable goal right now? You need to, I think, because you can remove. You need to do it. Yeah, you need to kill it, and then you need to uh, kill off the three threes. But you don't even clear all the patrons. No, you leave a three two and a three one. The three one will the die though to unstable, but the mm -hmm. three two will get another. Mm. But then, if we get the worst on commander, yeah, that's awkward. <laughs> yeah, this is a very very hard turn actually. Does he run Light Bomb? Clint Clint? Clint? Yes. Yeah, he, he was running run, run Light Bomb, yeah. Okay. I think he's running one Helena but one Light Bomb. Yeah, so this is the trade. Uh, will he heal? Or play? That could be bad. That could get him into trouble. Yeah, if this opponent draws the worst on Commander, that would get him in a lot of trouble. Why didn't he heal the Blackwing Corruptor? Uh, because it would die to the whirlwind anyway. It oh, would have been right, at one right, and then right, it would have died. Right. So, Armor Smith. Uh, this is his offer. I you have to frothing, you're out of cards. You're getting attrition down by a priest. 
<laughs> you, you have no more like relevance. Seven cards. So oh, yes, seven cards actually. Seven cards yeah. left. No, I don't no think war song yet. There is no more whirlwinds. Is there not a goal in the? In the there no, is. There's uh, not a death bite. There is a death bite. There's also a war axe. No, there is not another death bite. He used both. He used? Yeah, he used both. One, he coined up one in the start. Oh, right, right, right. Oh. Colento baited the end yeah. of the, the first one. Yeah, so there's no more whirlwind effects unless there's another ghoul. There uh, is, I think. There's one more war song, too. Right? Two there's war songs. Two war yeah, songs. He hasn't yeah. seen war song. That's why he but, hasn't won yet. So, that's right. So yeah. then this is going to spawn another Grim Patron. Yeah. Um. Can't, you can't kill off that Cabal, though. No. No, but you can't kill off the Whelp, which helps a little bit, I guess. Yeah, this is looking really grim for Dog. Vol'jin. Whoa. So Vol'jin, holy no. Yeah, that's that's perfect. You can Vol'jin the Grim Patron. Then you can attack... Or the Frog. You probably... No, 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 the Grim Patron. Because... No, you can actually attack the Green Patron with your 4-4. Four, four. Um, no, you attack you the Armorsmith with your 4-4. Four, four. You finish off the, the Frothing with your 2-2 two, two Whelp and just kill it off. But uh, the Frothing won't die. Uh, I think... I think, yeah, I think, I think oh, you, you get to it. keep another creature? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. You don't want to you're actually right, trade right, you're right. anything to the Frothing. You're right, you're right. So... And then Holy Nova. And, I mean, this it could just be the end and Cloud9... Yeah. We'll be getting their ticket to the grand finals. Yeah, yeah Doug knows That's that it. this is over. There's just no way for him to climb back. In Cloud9 in dominating fashion, looks like they're going to take out Temple Storm 6 3 and Value Town 6 3. Oh man. And that, patron that is doesn't 90k happen. in the bank. Yeah. Ecop is screaming <laughs> in ecstasy. Yeah. Because I mean, that's a lot of money. It's the most money that uh, most players make in their entire year. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, they guaranteed at least second place. Uh, up next, we'll have the losers matches, and uh, Value Town will be up against the winner of the losers matches, playing right. for third place. But uh, you know, you can you can sink further than that. I mean, you might go home with nothing. That's right. Value Town, even though they were feeling high flying uh, after day number one, realistically could lose in the runners match, and then end up in fourth place. It's not over, but for at least these guys that we have on camera, the day is over. They go to yep. day number three. And they get to relax and they get to the think about finals. it. That's right. And they get to observe everybody too. And, mm -hmm. and the stress is uh, is over for them. They're going to come in for an interview. Well, it's, it's, not, it's not completely over. I think tomorrow they have to submit new decks for the finals. Yeah, sequence. today. Mm -hmm. yeah. The, the, so they still have to think about that. You know. Yeah. Still, still something to do. All right, guys, come on up here. Congrats. Okay. okay. Uh, I don't know how he's gonna fit too well because we got we got more chairs now. All right. So you guys, you guys are feeling pretty high up. Let me let me just get in here. There we Basket go. Basket my glory. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's right. So um so Strife Girl was part like let's just let's just talk about that biggest game the uh the mid range pally versus uh, dogs patron warrior yeah uh, Strife Girl was probably a bit confused on some of the stuff that was going on but you guys knew the hands how did you feel when Dog like missed lethal and then just went with uh, the all in play without <laughs> having lethal and it's probably one of those moments when it's like getting triple kills is that from um Soul Shredder okay. <laughs> It's not only like RNG, it's RNG plus punish. That sounds really good. <laughs> yeah, it's, always, it's always good when the patron pair gets punished. Right? Yeah. Just remember like, they well, never win, right? Get punished. When and Dog yeah. had like so many outs as well, but it was like, and, and Strafko was like in so many losing situations after that missed lethal, but yeah. it was like it's what it was meant to be. The punish <laughs> was supposed to happen and happened. It felt so great. Uh, justice. Yeah. Yeah, was that was that the game of uh, of the tournament so far for you guys? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I was so fucking excited. Oh my god, it was so oh, good. Oh, praise the Merlock Knight. Yeah. yeah. Well, that that match was really huge. Yeah. Um, you had a pretty unlucky one yourself early on against uh, against Trump against his paladin, where the the knife jugglers failed you big time. Yeah, but, uh, it was at the t uh, top of the consecration. Although it was likely that he would have drawn it at some point, right? But Cabana Doom was like, getting a three two oh, after. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was uh, certainly one, probably the craziest set we've had so far. But uh, great stuff from you guys. You guys do advance to the finals automatically. And uh, what are you guys gonna do? Are you guys gonna chill out around the house like you did yesterday, or is it serious mode for tomorrow? Oh no, dude, I'm gonna party hard. We we, <laughs> we are we already won twenty k at least. Uh, I mean, everyone twenty k. So we got because we got second place guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's 
Is it 30? And no 20? Yeah, 60K oh. divided by 3. 60K, all right, all right. Well, there's, there's more to win than that. Oh. Yeah, we want, we want to go all the way, of course. Who do you think is going to come out ahead in the uh, in the next few matches? Uh, Nylum, um, Nylum versus Temple Storm. Um, I think Tempo Storm is going to win, and then Valley Town will win. Yeah. That's not predictions. And uh, who do you guys expect to see in the finals tomorrow? I hope that we get to face Nehulum. I hope that we get to, get to face Nehulum in the grand finals, because then we beat, first of all, we beat all three okay. teams. Oh, okay. And, um, okay. So it's just, yeah. just complete it like, crushing yeah, dominance. We, 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 That's what you yeah. guys are going for? Exactly. We want yeah. the complete domination. Okay. Well, good luck with that. Any last words before we take a break here, guys? <laughs> Oh, damn. That's what it is. <laughs> All right, congratulations again, guys. We'll take a, a quick break while we set up for the next set of games. It will be the losers' matches, but the winner will have a chance to play against Valley Town for the second seed for tomorrow. Check it out. See you guys soon.